Beyond Salt Marsh is a game played by adults and recorded for an adult audience. Sometimes we use adult language and explore adult topics. Consider yourself warned. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Superior Adventures Guild. My name is Dave, your humble dungeon master, and we are going to jump into another crazy episode of Beyond Salt Marsh with a group of guys that have been with me for the long haul. You might even call them my good buddies. Say hello to the Deg Gang. Hey, guys. hey -o. Hey. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Oh, hello. How's everybody doing? Good. I didn't see you there. <laughs> Great. Oh, you, you've, been on the, you've been on the computer <laughs> with us for like 10 minutes, dude. How did you not see us? Damn it. Oh. <laughs> Uh, it's movie magic. His yeah. confusion is movie magic. That's right. Um, that how about this? That was a different scene. Yeah. That's a good bit, though. We'll work on that one. Uh, in the meantime, let's introduce ourselves to uh, that person that's watching right now. Hi, Mom. Uh, go ahead, Andy. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm Runar Deg. I'm playing Andy tonight. Uh, I mean... I'm Andy, and I'm playing Runar Deg. I get a little into my character sometimes. Uh, eighth level human dual sword wielding battle master fighter and captain of the good buddy. And excited to explore this valley and look for this monster. Hey, that's, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Kirk. I'm playing Byron Earn. I'm the rogue. Who just gave up his tan bag of tricks because he felt bad about all the monsters killing his animal friends. Um, mm -hmm. So he gave it to a hierophant of uh, Biori, and she protect. She's going to protect his animals now. So you're going to miss those fuzzy balls. I am. You know, I, I actually <laughs> over the over the last couple of days, I was thinking about it. Like I could have only pulled them out in town just had them be like my roaming pack of buddies total yeah. missed opportunity it's okay mm -hmm. though hey it's me chad and i'm wondering if perhaps that the existences of his animals were consistent upon withdrawing Right? Like, is the bear that you drew out one time the same bear out the next time? Right? Yeah, it was it was Bernie every single time. You know, yeah. yeah I mean, what happens it, if I pull three bears? Perhaps, I mean, you never did, so we well, would never a, know, right? We, yeah. we can never ask that question because you don't have a bag anymore. Mm. Um, and as Appreciate a matter of fact, I, I feel like after the narration, that bag doesn't exist. What bag? Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, these are the things that I wonder. Um, playing Tenok Knucklebones, resident uh, ghost wise halfling, uh, divination wizard, just here to cast spells and punch punch people. Yeah. I was going to say cast spells and punch dicks, but that was really Erin's thing, so I can't. I have to punch something else. That's true. Find a different target. Yeah, yeah. Same general it's height area, cast, though. Cast spells Knees? and punch kneecaps. There you go. Yeah. Hi, Michael. Well, hello. I'm Michael, regular human D&D &D player. Of course, here <laughs> to play with my good buddies and i will be playing theo the regular half elf hexblade warlock who has nothing strange or unusual happening with him and is just a regular old adventure here to make his way in the world and find out what's going on in the cauldrons back to you dave <laughs> The way you say that sounds so suspicious. I can't wait to see what you will be pulling out of your sack tonight. No, they <clears> the <throat> blood sack. I can't use that anymore. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, you know what? I think there's some uh, announcements to be had. Um, why don't we start out with Chad? Chad, oh. tell us some things. Hello. Tomorrow, this time, this channel, 
Midwinter Keening, <clears throat> a game that I run set in the campaign setting of Svealand by Dream Realm Storytellers, our fantastic creators and our sponsors for that show. I'm very excited. Uh, last week we had a player uh, who was absent, but that was okay because her character was in a place that uh, other players wouldn't. Go, the other players' characters wouldn't go for reasons, and and then they got a few answers and slit some throats, and now they're about to explore some more. Dangers afoot in the north. Mm, mm, I'm excited. <clears throat> That's tomorrow. Coming up in October is a couple of is a couple of conventions that I am excited to be a part of. Uh, number one is Virtual Greyhawk Con, a convention all about Greyhawk, where we play this game, put on and headlined by the Lord Gazumba Twitch channel. That that convention is October 1st through the 3rd. You can join us and play with Dave, who will run you through s such adventures as the Siege of Westkeep and How Not to Die in a Keep in 10 Turns. Uh, and that's from 10 to 2 p.m., I think it's on Saturday the 2nd. You can sign up at mm -hmm. this link that will appear right there in the chat. I'm very excited. It's going to be super fun. Um, and then later in October, perhaps the 21st through the 23rd, is Game Hole Con, the largest RPG convention in the Midwest, right in the center-ish of Madison, Wisconsin, where cool people eat dumplings. Mm -hmm. Um, and tacos, yeah. Um, but there's also a virtual component. If, for some reason, uh, some very specific reason that we've all lived through for the past year and a half, uh, you don't want to go to a, a physical convention, you can you can uh, take part virtually, which is a mm. totally valid way because that's what we're going to be doing. I personally will be running two adventures uh, at, in the virtual space there. At, at, wow, I can't talk anymore. At Game Hole Con, number one. Bearcats to the Rescue, which is an adventure not unlike Red Dawn, except for it's with space teenagers instead of regular Earth teenagers. And number two is Assault on Europa Four on Europa Two. Assault on Europa Two. I can read my own note card, uh, which is uh, <laughs> you have this uh, written down. This I is do. written. Yeah. Oh my god, that's great! <laughs> so professional. Uh, <laughs> which uh, which is all about. Uh, you know, space teenagers who have enlisted in the Galactic Navy and are, in fact, space marines fighting an intergalactic menace known as Xenos, not unlike the movie Aliens, or perhaps their sequel, Aliens 2. Not to be confused with any of those horrible alien movies that came after, just the first two. Um, and those are uh, Saturday and Friday, this as far as I know, registration will go live uh, for specific games, uh, I believe, uh, September 1st-ish, sometime in September. Uh, but badge registration is currently active. The There's a housing portal if you're going to go there uh, physically. Uh, it's super fun. Either way, it's going to be great. Um, I'm excited to play Like a play portal to, like, Mordekainen's Magnificent Mansion? Or are we talking more of a Lehman's Tiny Hut? Or Well... Uh, Depends I on your budget, point, I suppose. Yeah, you know, at this point, I feel like probably all of the good ho close hotel rooms are probably mm -hmm. booked up. Uh, but I'll tell you what, my secret la when I was there uh, was uh, a pretty sweet Airbnb. It was a little, it was like 20 minutes out, but it was nice and quiet. Um, as much as it would have been nice to have been there and then been able to just walk to my hotel room, it was also not, it was also nice not to have to deal with a bunch of rowdy late coming home convention goers in the hallway outside of my hotel room. <laughs> Bunch of LARPers um, running around the hallways yeah, all night. It was ridiculous. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and that, it's a super fun convention. Um, the virtual <laughs> virtual space is going to be great. So, um, yeah, you can join us tomorrow. You can play games with us in the future. We're waiting. <sighs> <laughs> wow I, it's it is the future now that was it is it is i took that was an the epic the future. epic announcement thank you chad uh andrew oh boy tell us, tell us do something I, do i have an announcement for you guys today is this written down too no absolutely oh, not. oh you're ad-libbing yes <laughs> go 
you would not believe the merch that we have now. What? We got t-shirts like this Whoa. one. That's you sexy. Know, every color under the rainbow. We got uh, sweatshirts, kids' shirts, masks, so you don't catch that new Rona. Ooh, uh, wall art. Get your totes, your mugs, your stickers. Come on now. <laughs> Let's do it up. What about Post jackets? That. Do they have jackets? I would like to get like one of those coach jackets. You know, those thin... Uh... Mm-hmm. Anyways, a good one. let's put in a request. Like a track jacket? Yeah, track jacket. Or, or yeah. a sweatsuit, even. I think the closest thing they have is crew neck sweatshirts, but, you know, we could work That's on cool. it. Yeah, I got a guy. I got a guy who wants a collab. I'll talk to him about that. Yeah, I want a jacket. There's, there's got to be some place that makes, like, the hockey jackets and... yeah. I want like a D and D letter area. jacket. We do live in the state of hot D and D letter jacket. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm shooting like for. Like the old school. <laughs> yeah, I think it would sell. If yeah. anybody steals my idea, nice job. All right, thank you, Andy. Yeah, no nice job, man. That was ad libbed and the whole works. You're uh, you're really coming. Al- you've come a long way, my friend. I, however, have some copy that was handed to me by our producer myself. Um, you guys, listen to this news. Okay. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but we have a sponsor for this stream. That's right. Our friends at CZRPG, you've probably heard of them, best-selling publishers on the DMs Guild, perhaps? That's true. They create and publish all kinds of great content for 5th edition's Dungeons & Dragons, including settings, adventures, map packs, player options, and more, including custom mapping? Christian, if you can verify that, that'd be great. I think that's true. I'm going to go with it. Uh, Guess what? Tonight, we've got a giveaway. That's right. We are going to be giving away something very, very special Something that we've been wanting to give away for a long, long time. And I'm definitely not stalling while I get the, uh, while I get the giveaway started. You would never do that, sir. I would never do anything like that at all because at the very least we are professionals here. Uh, but no, seriously, encounters in Chult is, uh, the giveaway. Uh, it's a tomb annihilation supplement. It's 28 pages of content that's designed to enrich your campaign in the jungles there are 10 encounters three expanded encounters two stat blocks for creatures and npcs and 10 unique maps and all you need to do to enter this giveaway and our friend kirk is going to show you how to do it is type czrpg into the chat that's czrpg just like kai whimsy just did welcome welcome you uh you might win um, those who want to check out the, uh, the full catalog of, uh, CZRPG can check out this link that I'm going to drop into the chat there. It's also, if Chad and M- Michael will point to it, it's just below their, uh, their panels there in the screen, bitly.com slash guild dash CZRPG. Another thing that we should mention is that, uh, they are, they have a, a newsletter, a, email list, a way to get updates on their publications and free stuff. That's right. Free stuff. They give away uh, maps and things that you can use for free. Check out that link right there. CZRPG dash free dash stuff. Uh, sign up for their email list and uh, yeah, get some free stuff that you can use either in your own campaign or that you can give to your DM because guess what? DMs like little surprises like that. They might, uh, they might give they you really an inspiration really point or something. Who knows? It happens. Not very often in this campaign, but it does happen in other campaigns, I've heard. Although, Kirk, uh, Byron, Byron, you got an uh, inspiration point uh, during the last episode for your yep. uh, ex- exquisite role-playing with that tan bag of tricks. So don't forget about that. I spent um, it already. Mm, he already used it. Perfect. I'm glad I reminded you. Um, other than that, folks, I want to just say thanks for watching. Check out the fact that you can gift adv- advantage to our players or me, the DM, by cheersing, cheersing, cheering, cheering. A hundred bits. That's all it takes. And you can Yay! gift advantage. <laughs> Just do that a hundred times. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> Don't tempt that Kai Whimsy guy. He uh, he gets crazy. 
cheer your bits 100 times. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Michael, Kirk, anything else? Um, well, today is uh, Jackie Kennedy's birthday. Oh, okay. Um, DeAndre that's Cortez Way, me. also known as Soldier Boy, Ooh, was born today okay. as well. Okay. Sally okay. Struthers, Robert Hook, the first person to ever visualize a microorganism. No Ken way. Burns. Beatrix wow. Potter. Beatrix? Lady who, yeah, Beatrix Potter wrote The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Her yeah, birthday's today. That's a classic. Wow. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to uh, birthdays. Uh, I hear she's a big fan of the stream, actually. Um, I've heard the same thing. I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I, I just don't want to tell you because it's sad. Oh, oh shoot. Burns is born tomorrow. Died in 43. Beatrix, RIP, you're still uh, leaving your mark on this on this world, and we appreciate that. Okay, enough of that. That that bit got real real sad real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna dive into a quick recap from what happened last week because that's kind of what we do around here. We like to keep people informed. Um, in the last episode, you guys found yourselves standing before the hierophant of Biori. Informing her of your quest to find a monster that had attacked your friend Tanika and perhaps holds the key to the disappearance of Dr. Octavio Gras. In turn, she informed you of the corruption that was defiling the island, indeed a plague of uncertain consequence, uh, originating from the Amedio jungle with a name given to it by the Zenzaran, Mosengi. The Zenzaran tribe, it was revealed, are not a bloodthirsty group of warriors, as the stories describe, but actually sentinels and protectors who sought to contain the Mosengi. You came to realize that for better or for worse, the fate of the island, the hold, or possibly the realm depends on your quest. And Andama directed you towards an area called the Cauldrons, which is a region of Cybert Isle where volcanic activity near the surface creates a winding field of steam vents in, within a vast sinuous canyon lands. And there you would find the creature that you seek. Uh, although time seems to stand still, you eventually found yourselves back among the standing stones of Biori, however much rejuvenated from their earlier corruption when you fought the blood amniote and the skulking cysts. From there, you set off into the dense jungle on foot following your scarlet macaw guide towards the destination of the cauldrons. Uh, and even with the guide, your travel was pretty difficult. There was no trail, only vine, thorn, and thick brush. Eventually, you find yourselves camping atop a large flat rock perched on the side of a scree slope, and you experience a beautiful clear night with a sea of jungle canopy below you and the bright stars of Earth above. Tenok shared some of his backstory around the fire while Byron swatted insects, scratched bites, and complained, given the fact that he was having a pretty rough outing. Um, later, Tenok would seek advice from Mother Tiger on whether or not they might, have, they might be able to save Dr. Grah from the Mosengi Plague. The next morning, you pressed on, eventually finding yourself standing at the base of a vast labyrinth of canyons, Tenok shared his divination from the night before, and you all agreed that you may have to kill the beast, regardless of its effect on the doctor. This was followed by a tense discussion with Dan Virius about the party's motivations, specifically your employer, Alesco Mariconia, and what his intentions were with this plague, this discovery by the doctor. One by one, each of you ensured uh, that your intent was not to deliver some potentially world ending biological weapon to anyone, uh, but uh, to maybe destroy it here and end it on the island. Satisfied for the moment, you pressed into the cauldrons. You stepped forward. Your marching order was as follows, Runar in the lead with Theo and Dan Virius following Byron and then Tenok, who had just cast mage armor. As you step forward, a geyser erupts sending a 20-foot-tall jet of boiling water and steam into the air. Hot mist settles on the damp ground, sizzling against the strange limestone formations that drip with condensation. Steam hangs low, obscuring your view. Beyond 20 or 30 feet. What, my friends, would you like to do next? We will yeah. proceed into the cauldrons. Yeah. Guys, um, this steam is super thick. I'd like to look around and see if I can pick up any sort of trail. Some of us like it thick, Byron. Do not judge. I hate mm. the steam. It's, it's, 
It's doing terrible things to my skin. Runar, go ahead and roll a uh, perception check as you look around. You're looking for trails. It could be a survival check as well if you'd like. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's both the same. All right. What'd you get? I've got to scroll way down for this. Okay. Um, nine. Okay. You look around and the, the ground below your feet is this hard rock. You have descended a few meters into, or feet I should say, into the first of the canyons and there are rock walls that are sheer cliffs above you. So you're kind of in like these slot canyons and it is a interestingly, an interesting combination of both harsh dried ground but then above, uh, ahead of you, you see this opening and this bubbling, frothing, steaming vent. And that is where this 20-foot column of, of geyser erupted in front of you. And as you're looking about, it does again. You, you look for tracks, but on this hard ground, at this location where you're at, you don't find anything. Okay. I will send my uh, black-collared hawk uh, on a scouting pattern okay. uh, out over the cauldrons. All right, give me a roll, a perception roll for your hawk. Oh, boy. What? Yep. Mm. Oh, but also so much better. Um, I think that's a 14. Pretty sure it's okay. 14. Yep. All right. So with a 14, your hawk soars up above you, kind of keeping itself kind of centered on your location for the time being, unless you want to send it farther. But you uh, are you kind of channeling the vision of the hawk at this point? Um, I mean, I realistically, I can only do that to within 100 feet. 100 so, feet, right. Yeah. I would kind of send him out, and then um, as he comes back, um, you know, have him, like, share what he's seen. Okay. Or, or you know, tell me the important sounding bits that it, he thinks is good. All right, so that'll take some time. So your hawk flies yeah. out over this canyon lands, a bad lands, if you will. Uh, what are the rest of you doing at this point? Do you do you move forward? Well, if he's scouting, I'm going to wait for the scouting to come back. So just okay. holding position and being watchful. Yeah, I'm going to be scratching my itches. Just a lot of bug bites. Just weeping sores all over you. <laughs> just to get a picture, uh, how wide is the canyon that, canyon that we're in? Like how this this is first it really bit. Yeah, this first bit that you that you're inside of is probably no more than ten feet across. Okay. It's very tight, and the and the walls as you look up they go ten to fifteen feet above you, and so it's difficult to even there's there's long shadows that are cast within the canyon, so it's a little bit dark. It's not like nighttime dark, but there's shadow, and um, and you just hear this eruption off in the distance of another geyser. Theo, you're keeping watchful, you said. Why don't you roll a perception check for me? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah, no, that's a big nine. Okay, um, and then roll a d20. Oh, yeah, big four. Okay. So you do oh, not yeah. hear you do not hear the red dragon approaching from the east. Good. I don't want to hear. It. It's best not to. Yeah. You know? Just get it over. Cuts there. down on the terror. Um, okay, so you you look around Theo and your vision is very cut off. You look down the canyon where you're headed, you look back from where you came, you're, you know, 20 to 50 feet into this sort of deep slot canyon. And you're kind of all stacked up, sort of hanging out, waiting for the 
the eagle, or excuse me, the hawk to come back with some sort of information about the terrain, but you do not see anything that, that sets you off or gives you um, cause for immediate concern. Eventually the hawk returns and Tenok through some crazy, crazy wizard magic, you're able to gather from the hawk that these canyons go on for miles and that the hawk could potentially continue on and scout for hours looking for anything of interest. There are dangers ahead in the form of geysers that are erupting on a fairly regular, although you would have to study it to figure out if there's a pattern to it. But mm. uh, fairly regularly, there's these eruptions. Um, it is a vast, rocky terrain. The vegetation is sparse, dried and brittle leaves on the trees. Some trees are dead. Uh, it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, what did you roll, a 14? That's probably yeah. good for a 14. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um... Yeah, I'll kind of relay that information uh, to my fellows. Um, it's a vast area of these canyons, geysers, uh, these spouts of, of hot water and steam and whatnot. Um, it's going to be some work. <laughs> So maybe we should just um, start moving and I could use the hawk to kind of circle above us, you know, within that kind of distance and I can um, share his sight as I need to, um, to kind of get an idea where we are, where we're going, what dangers might lurk around a corner. That you sort could of stay thing. in his sight and one of us could carry you. Or that, yeah. I like we could that do that. idea. Runar is very beefy, I'm told. Yeah. Let's make yeah, let's keep there. moving. Carefully, though. Like, let's not get too close to these vents and these geysers. I only weigh 56 pounds. <laughs> and I... Woo! <laughs> gets hit by a geyser. Burp! <laughs> so you uh, you throw Tenok up on your shoulder, Runar? Oh, wait, wait, what? Oh, because he can't see? Is that what's going on? Yeah, right. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, so I can keep my sight in my hawk's sight as he flies around. Um, I can still talk, um, but I can't see through my eyes when that happens. Great. Yeah, sure. However you want to do it. Or you could just, like, hold on to my pack or something, right? I could do that. Yeah, I think it's that funnier if I ride on your shoulders. Also, the ground is probably littered with rocks. Yeah. It is I... rocky, and there are cracks in the rock, so it's not even terrain. It's uneven, and, and it's not difficult terrain by any means in the parlance of D&D, &D, but it definitely is uneven, rocky, and um, there are cracks and fissures. Steam vents coming out of the walls in certain places. Better to just carry him on our shoulders like the god he is. You All right. Know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys uh, you guys head further down the canyon, and it's as, it takes like about an hour or so of travel through this narrow slot canyon, and all of a sudden the canyon starts to widen out a little bit. And you hear these, these geysers erupting around you, although you haven't, you haven't quite come across one. You've seen the spray above you. Um, you've maybe seen some smaller ones, but you come to a fork in the deepening labyrinth of the cauldrons and there are two paths, one to the left and one to the right. And in the middle of this fork, you see a vent of bubbling mineral, mineralized water and it's frothy and it's not quite erupting, but as you stand there, you get the sense that it could quite easily erupt. And I'm going to go ahead and throw you guys onto a map here. So hold on one second. Dun, dun, dun. Just so you can kind of see what uh, what the viewers are seeing here. I'm going to hold shift jump as I run forward so that I can dive and roll. Dive and roll through the, uh, through the trap. So you see that there is a... 
a vent here. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite possibly, depending on the visual obscurity of these walls, you might also see that there is another vent here up around to the right. Nope. I mean, I don't, I guess. Wait, I'm on Runar's shoulders. Yeah, so you'd be up kind of in front. Nope, I still don't see that. <laughs> um, so that the pool in front of us is looking like it's bubbling. Yep. Um, we haven't seen any monster or human or halfling tracks, right? You, uh, well, Runar searched for tracks and didn't see anything. If you want to make a survival roll, go, go right ahead. I certainly will here now. And As you I get have closer from my hawk's eyes, uh, roll another perception check for the hawk. You start to, as you approach this vent, you start to hear this sort of bubbling lava, water boiling sound. I got an 11. 22 for the hawk eyes. Um, Theo, are you, are you um, trained in or proficient in survival? You are. I am trained in survival. And you rolled an 11. Um, you you look down and you do get the sense that there there was some movement through this canyon, although difficult to make out if it's humanoid or animal. Uh, but you you can tell that there is a distinct path, like a game trail, if you're familiar with that concept, that goes through this area uh, and turns it it heads to the left fork. And there's another another trail that seems to veer off between the wall and this uh, vent. This cauldron, if you will. I have excellent news. There are things that live down here, and um, they bo go both ways. So uh, I don't see anything telling us where the uh, good Zenzarin or uh, our associate, uh, the, the very big one, went. Let's go down the right path. Let's hug the. Let's go. Let's go right by the. the things. Let's wait till they. Let's wait till they erupt, and then we'll let's go by them. That's actually very astute. I like that idea. Yes, we will wait for them. All right. All right. So yeah, how about we wait a few minutes and see if this thing is looking like it's going to get worse? Byron, roll a d20 for me. That's a d10. My bad. <laughs> Typed it wrong. I got a 15. Wait, how did the how did you roll for the ship? <laughs> what? Oh yeah, yeah that's oh. weird. <laughs> what? That's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> You must have had it selected on the... The good buddy the comes screen. sailing in out of nowhere. The ship comes <laughs> cruising across the landscape. Um, good all ship. right, so you rolled a 15. Mm -hmm. You guys yep. wait for a couple minutes, uh, and the geyser starts to boil more violently, and you see it start to spitter, and suddenly this eruption 30 feet into the air, this geyser shoots water, boiling water, and as it lands on the that, rocks that. around it, it starts to sizzle and burn the rock. Um, let me just double check something here. Back, 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 back. I back. don't think that's water. <laughs> it splashes at, almost at your feet, Runar. And you can you look down and it's sizzling. It does look like some sort of a bluish. There's a weird blue minerally look to it. And it smells of sulfur. Mm. That is acid. Yeah, I don't know if this is in... I don't oh, know. It's all water. It just blew up. Let's go now before it blows up. Yeah. Very right. good plan, yes. So let's move. We'll move quickly to the right. Go ahead and uh, move your 30 feet as if this was a oh, combat okay. action. You guys can all move at the same time, though, if you want. Uh, I guess I can... Can I... Is this a space I can stand in? Sure. That's 30 for me. Okay. Can we dash? Runar, roll a d20 for no. me. Runar, dash. <laughs> Can I <have> dash? <laughs> 12. Uh, this, the one in front of you, this, this cauldron in front of you continues to boil and it starts to spitter and it, it, it starts sending jets of water three feet, four feet, five feet, but then it kind of settles back down 
and just is boiling next to you as you walk past it. You can see you look kind of into it a little bit and it's like this blue glow and it's bubbling and it's viscous. It's not like it's not it doesn't flow as if it's water. It flows as if it's something a bit thicker than water. It's right. napalm. Cool. Okay, so let's just dash past this thing. I agree. That, cool. All right. So I'm going to keep running past. Hold on. Let me get Dan Burius into the mix here as well. So that's another 30 feet for me. Oh, that's awkward. So, Dave, I can't see any forward, but I can definitely see a pie of something to the left. Yeah. So that it's delicious know. pie. It's fine. Don't worry I, about the pie. I don't know what it is, but there is a small scene to the left. As you walk past this area, you can see that there are along the wall these blue crystals that have formed in some of the cracks along the walls of this canyon. And there is a second uh, cauldron in front of you. Tenok, I need you to roll a d20. Here comes the pain, boys. Six. <laughs> it, you, you look you look at it and it doesn't it, it's it's not boiling over but it's quite close to the surface and it's there's steam rising out of it and you're having a hard time seeing ahead let's keep moving go, yep. go, go. so tenok you make it past theo or runar why don't you roll a d20 as uh -huh. well okay do you want me to move back to where i was uh ultimately it Probably doesn't matter too much, but yeah, roll a d20. 15. And I'm riding on Runar's back. <laughs> All right, and let's get a roll for Dan Virius as well. Dan Virius. All right, so everybody, uh, everybody move that they're 30 feet, and let's see where that put you, because this thing is about to erupt. Oh, God. I have moved my 30. Is that our okay. 30, Runar? Yeah. God. From where I was, yeah. People who aren't monks are so slow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Dan Mears. People who are carrying other people are so slow. <laughs> All right. So as you guys are skirting on either side of this thing, it starts to boil over and it shoots this geyser of air about 60 feet in, or geyser of water 60 feet into the air. And you just, you hear it fly up. It's almost like an explosion next to you, and it starts to rain down. And I need everybody to roll a dexterity saving throw, please. Oh, yeah. The DC to beat ah. is a 14. So good at those. 19. All right. <laughs> I guess I am good at those. So for those of you that oh, no, Theo. failed. Byron. Wait, I think I might You'll have take three fire right, how damage did you only roll? and three acid damage. Theo always it takes rains damage. down on you, and then take half if you made the save, please. And Byron, oh, half um, if you made it. You'll take half, right? Because I so think you have you have says, the rogue yep, ability have evasion. Yeah. yeah, evasion. Yep. So I take only half. Okay. So how much damage did you say? I'm sorry. You'll take, uh, it was six total, so you'll take three. Cool. As right, this just... comes down, it sizzles on your bare skin and, and burns you, and you can see your the flesh actually sort of uh, burn with this blue glow. Oh, man, this is like itching my bug bites. Oh. Keep moving, keep moving. Oh, thank goodness. All right. You guys continue on. Yeah. And as you as you get farther down, go ahead and ro move another thirty feet. You hear it ex erupt again from behind you, and you luckily have made your way past it as it sizzles on the rocky ground. And you get to a point now where you can see uh, a bend up ahead to the right. And again, you see uh, to your left, or bend to the left, excuse me. And Byron, on your left, you also see these these blue crystals. I'm going to stop, and I'm going to take out a rag. 
I'm going to drape it over one of the crystals and see what happens to the rag. Theo, in the meantime, will activate the Elder Sight. Mm. All right, so Byron, you, you, you put your rag over the crystals. It doesn't seem to do anything. It doesn't, doesn't burn. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't cause any effect whatsoever. And Theo, you also look at these crystals, and they do not seem to be magical in nature. They seem to be some sort of a mineral, a crystallized somebody, mineral. Somebody, somebody help me harvest a few of these. I don't, I don't have a pickaxe. Um, um, let me check my <laughs> gear. I have a hammer and a pipe. I have a crowbar. I could probably, uh, I'll try a crowbar. I'll yeah, I have a crowbar, a crowbar and a hammer and some iron spikes. I've got a knife. That's, probably that's, use a hammer that's not a spike. knife. Help. No, you're right. It's a dagger. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try and crowbar one of the crystals off the, the side of the cliff. This is a knife. Dan Varius pulls out his knife and shows it to you. And Byron, you've seen it before. In fact, you you took it from him once. That That's a shockingly big knife, my friend. What do you do with it? We'll kill things with it. Oh, good. That's Keep it, it handy. It tracks. <laughs> do these crystals look like anything I've seen before? Roll a nature check. Like, do they look like diamonds or sapphires? I'm gonna Nature, you said? Sorry. Yep. I'm going to keep a lookout through the eyes of my bird 11. while this is happening. Uh, roll a perception check for your hawk, please. Uh... Runar, you do not recognize this particular crystalline structure. It doesn't seem to be a gem. Uh, it, it appears to almost be growing in clusters in the mm. rock wall. Almost appears as though it seems to be at locations where there's some sort of a seep, uh, mm. a, a water that's dripping from cracks in the in the canyon walls. These acid uh, agates. <laughs> Fifteen, huh? Yeah. Yep. So uh, you you close your eyes and, and hone in on the hawk that circles above, and it looks about and it sees that there is a a pathway that leads to the west in front of you, and and there are two different paths ahead. It forks again, one to the south, and uh, another fork that heads continues west into what appears to be a a rift zone. I bet you there's pie in one of those. So what you're saying is this canyon works its way west, and then there's a fork to the there's south fork. and or to the west. Correct. To the and then f to following that fork west is is a rift zone. Yeah, it kind of opens up from what the hawk can see into a larger area, and there is a, a narrower canyon that heads to the south. Oh, that's what you mean by rift zone. I thought it was like a series of planar fissures. Oof, no, no, okay. no, different, different game. Not yeah. planar fissures. These are all on the material plane. Anal fissures. For the nope, not that either. No. Unfortunately, yeah. Thankfully, um, we're not dealing with that yet. Um, I'll say uh, the this canyon continues, uh, and there is a fork uh, to the south and to the west. Uh, the South Fork narrows and the West Fork uh, opens up wider. I don't see anything else around. All right, let's keep Come moving. On. Guys, guys, wait, my crystal. Did, you didn't get it out yet? I don't know. Did I get did I get one, Dave? <laughs> Um, yeah, go ahead and roll a, roll a nature check. Sixteen. Yeah, you, you kind of chisel with your knife, right? Your dagger, kind of push at it, chisel away at these things. And a couple the of them. Crowbar. Oh, with the crowbar? All right, perfect. So you're, you're leveraging the crowbar and you break a few off and they fall into the ground. And, um... You're able to you're able to pick them up, no problem. As you do, Dan Varius says, "What was that?" 
and he looks up. And if you look up, roll exercise. roll a perception check for me. What if you're looking down? That's what I said. If you do look up, roll a perception check. If you're looking down, no need to roll. Ten. Eighteen. Twenty-two. <laughs> huh? uh, anybody who rolled above a sixteen sees perched on the ledge what appears to be a giant spider that is looking down at you. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna as like as you're looking, a, another one skitters down onto the oh, onto the floor behind you. Oh, oh. skittering. Let's let's just we don't need to fight these. Hey, let's just walk away. I'm starting to think we might not have a choice. I need you to roll. They haven't initiative. attacked us yet. You yep. took their <laughs> eggs. <laughs> oh, those are acid spider eggs. Oh, that That's sucks. right, acid spider eggs. And there's nothing better. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's worse. Why do I have so low? Oof. Well, at least beat Tenok. At least I have some Oof. advantages. There's something to be said for that. Ooh, that's not the best. Uh, Byron or <laughs> Runar, who who would go first? Ooh. Uh, the higher decks? Is that what it Probably is? Probably the captain, yeah. I, don't I, have a, I have 20. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Runar, or Byron. No, Runar, it is your yeah. turn first. Oh, the spiders don't go ahead of me? Nope. Okay. Oh, they go um, slower than I do. <laughs> they do. Um, okay, I will. Okay, I'm gonna pop, like shrug Tenok off my back, and I'm gonna move back here. Okay. Um, why, would you, why would you do that? Because there's two down here and only one up there. I don't. Because he's ruined our deck. Right I want to yeah. stay mounted. Okay, and I'll move to here. Um, actually, just accept, let's... It. just accept it for what it is. I was going to be like a tank. I'll move to here and um, <laughs> throw fireballs attack. from his back. Hey, I'm trying to talk. <laughs> All right, Runar, please go. What would you like right. to do, sir? I'll attack that. Um, Chad, that, uh, zip it. That Sorry. there's later with my uh, spear. Please do. All right. Do it fast, otherwise Chad might have an interjection. <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah. Seven. Yeah, that that'll hit. That'll real really hit hard. Um, and then I'll use my extra attack to hit him again. Fifteen for eight. Yes, that will also hit. You hack away at this thing twice, cutting a, one of its legs off the front of it with your first swing, and cutting right across the carapace, opening it as this very similar blue, wet, viscous blood or hemolymph, if you will, splatters on the ground in front of you and starts to burn the stone with a sizzle. Jeez, oh, they really are ass spiders. <laughs> um. That's it. That's my turn for now. Okay, uh, Byron. All right, Byron is going to look at the blood pouring out of the one near Runar and look in his hands at these crystal things. And he's going to like carefully put them back where they were, <laughs> and right. take a take a step back and a step back and a step back and a step back. And he's going to. Hold his hands up, and he's gonna be like, "Wait, wait, 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 spiders! We are not here to hurt you. We are after a beast. Please don't hurt us." And that's I'm gonna try that. I'm sure they speak common. So you're gonna I use your you're gonna use your uh, action to per try to persuade them. So roll a persuasion. I am check. going to try and persuade the spiders. Okay. Okay. Oh no! You're, oh, you're Byron. You're pretty sure it worked. 
<laughs> Guys, you're... we don't need to fight them. They're not going to hurt us. <laughs> I gave you know, their eggs back. You know, Runar's like... Ah, ah. Uh, that brings us to Theo. Oh, God. Well, I'm going to cut Byron's hamstrings and leave him for dead and run away while they're feasting on his innards. Um, no, oh, wait. That is not what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to reverse the grip on my sword and send a pair of Eldritch Blasts floating merrily through the air at Acid Spider number one here that okay. uh, our uh, Lord and Commander uh, Runar Degg has fired <laughs> at. Uh, yep, first oh, one yeah. definitely hits and blasts it hard and the second one knocks it down and it smashes against the rocks and it does not seem to be moving you have destroyed a giant spider a giant acid spider anything else theo it, as a free action theo looks fucking surprised that worked um and that is it okay tenok um Wow, it's giant spiders, yeah. I will use half my movement to get up after having been dumped onto the ground so vaingloriously by Runar. You dropped Tenok the tank on the ground like a sack <laughs> of potatoes? Um, I shrugged him off. Right. Mm -hmm. I will cast uh, Ray of Frost um, at uh, the guy... Uh, to my left. Okay. Yes, that uh, will hit. He will take nine cold damage, and his movement will be reduced by ten. We'll give him the slug. Yep. Slug icon. Okay. All right, great. Uh, Anything else, sir? And I... Whoops. I will... I will move here. What's here? Here. Yeah. Okay. I will scurry underneath Byron. Since Very obviously good. he knows what's happening. <laughs> okay, that brings us to <laughs> the spider's turn. Byron, you watch below you as Tenok kind of scurries underneath you looking for cover and you also look up and you see ahead of you the spider shift looking at you quizzically from your attempt to reason with it and at first you're like I think he's listening to me like I think this guy means I think it's going to go okay and then he leaps through the air and then you f you watch as it shoots a web at you Coming cool. straight at you and Tenok. Yeah, that was my choice. That was bad. So a 15 to cover. hit. Misses. misses the web misses as you just kind of move out of the way. And the, the one that has been frosted comes in 5, 10, and skitters down this, this incline, this, this wall of the canyon towards Runar and is going to attempt to bite him. Slowed though it is, it will attempt with a 19 to hit. 20 is my AC and now. You bash it away with your with your gauntlet, with your gloved gauntlet. And well, I have my it, shield uh, and my spear. Your shield then. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is your turn. All right, I'm going to... Um... Oh, wait, before you do that, I forgot something. Oh, okay. Before you do that, uh, let's see. Theo, you're probably still watching the creature that you dropped. And as its abdomen sort of splits open and it drops this this acid bile onto the ground, there is a, uh, oh, it's underneath, isn't it? There are a bunch of small spiders that skitter out. Nope, I don't want that guy. Yes. I want ah. the babies. 
Oh, I want the babies. Uh, swarm, of, swarm of babies. And they move forward and begin to climb all over Runar. They're going to try to bite you. <laughs> no spiders. Uh, they they do not hit you, however, as they bite through your, your boots. It is now your turn. Okay, I'm going to attack the big guy. Okay. Um, with the spear. Twenty for ten piercing. That will definitely hit. Um. Yeah, you just puncture it through the carapace, and it spills this this strange acid-like bile all over the spear. But the spear seems unaffected as you retract it. Okay, I'll hit him again. Mm -hmm. Ooh, twelve. I'm that one misses. Up. I'm going to expand a superiority dice to um, create a precision attack. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, so that would be a 16. That will hit. Five piercing. Okay. Yep, so you give it another jab using your uh, precision skills. You find a, a soft spot between these these plates of chitin and your spear sinks in a second time however um, it does not it does not drop the spider okay i'll hold here then okay byron all right byron's gonna reach onto his back pull his shield up draw a dagger from his shoulder and whip it in one action directly at this one that shot a web at him okay and, and yell sorry at the same time. <laughs> but what inflection do you get? He's an animal lover. Sorry. You can't fault him. <laughs> hey, I like animals better than people in real life, so I support Byron in all of these moves. Uh, 23 Whoa. for 21 damage. Um, yep, it's still standing, but it takes it right in the face where it's got these six eyes. You put it dead center right into the eyes, and it just, you know, you can kind of make yourself do the cross-eyed look. All six eyes look at the dagger as it's <laughs> embedded in its head. Oh, God. Um, bonus action. I'm going to take one step back. I'm going to, like, kind of re reach behind me to, like, try and feel around for Theo and be like, oh, dude, we pissed them off. <laughs> yes, you took their egg. I gave it back. And that brings us to Theo. You know that's not how nature works. Or never mind. Um, Theo will uh, point the uh, pommel of his sword at the acid blood spider fighting uh, Runardeg. Mm. And will invoke the ancient uh, war cry of his uh, warlock patron Travis Willingham. And yell, Eldritch Blast! Eldritch Blast! I forgot about that in your backstory. <laughs> it's okay, it was easy to miss. It was really just kind of a side way to get the attention of Laura Bailey, you know, deity of improv and uh, acting. Uh, that will hit, and that will also drop this creature, and it explodes its chest, and another another uh, swarm of spider babies. Ah, babies. Preggers. Yep, it was Pregger's drop out onto the floor, on floor, onto the ground below it, and start scurrying across the floor, t floor, across and, the tile floor towards you. And I've got another Eldritch Blast, which I was going to use to finish off the big spider, but now I'm worried about that swarm, but I'm yeah. still more scared of the big spider, so Theo's going to be brave and shoot the other big spider over here that just got a dagger mm. in the face. Okay. Eldritch Blast. Uh, that just hits and kills it as well. And it slumps to the ground similarly. All hail, all hail Travis Willingham. Long may his terrible accents and 
wonderful role-playing guide us. His accents are amazing. There we go. Well, that was more work than it needed to be. All right. Uh, anything else, Theo? Um, make a really horrified face at the spider skittering his way. That's it. All right. That brings us to Tenok. I will um, I'll say, Theo, look out as I uh, ray of frost the, the these guys here. Okay. Oh, and the one up on top pooped out some little babies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. They all left his presence. Um, Ray of Frost on the swarm. Yep. Misses. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. 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 Um, I will move back to here. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else, Tenok, or is that the end of your turn? That will be the end of my turn. All right. That brings us to the spiders. Runar, you had a question? Should Dan Various be in the order? Uh, you know what? He's not in the order. He hates spiders, but let's get him in. I mean, he was kind of shocked for a while. In the order. Yep. He was, he was pretty shocked. So he's going to jump in after Byron on the next turn. Thanks for the all reminder. Right. Yep. Um, all right. So brings us to the spiders. Runar, uh, this swarm in front of you is going to continue to, as it's crawling up your boots and your pant legs, it's going to try to bite you. We'll see what happens here. A 19. Nope. Misses. So they keep biting at you, but it's not doing any damage. But there are legitimately... I don't know, a couple dozen spiders crawling up your legs. So it is horrifying, nevertheless. Uh, this other group comes in and also starts to crawl up you. Runar, at this point, if you're watching, is just being swarmed by two giant groups of spiders as they attack you uh, with advantage this time. It's a hard AC to beat. And they fail as well, but... Nevertheless, for a, for the uh, atmospheric kind of tone, you are covered in spiders, which nobody nobody likes that. Um, five, ten, fifteen. Byron, this this group of spiders erupts from the dead giant spider's abdomen, soaked in this blue sort of aura, this dripping, and they're leaving the trail of blue fluid as they come towards you, and they are going to try to uh, scurry up your legs and bite you as well. 12, I believe, is not going to not gonna do it. So you are now nope. also starting to be covered in spiders as they're crawling up your feet. Um, and that brings us to the top of the order, and I need... Uh, let's go with... Theo, roll a d20 for me. While I'm doing this, Theo will mention to Byron, at least they're not undead spiders! <laughs> oh, God. Very true, very true. That's 19. That is. That definitely is. I need... I need Runar to roll a dexterity save as the cauldron erupts behind you. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm not clapping for you, Rara. I just I love <laughs> oh, environmental geez. effects. I just love environmental <laughs> effects. I know, I know. Uh, DC 14, please, is the one to beat. At least we'll be able to give the captain okay. a burial at sea even here. <laughs> That's true. It's kind of a mineral bath, really. 22. Oh, nice. Nice, so you'll take half damage. The first one is f kind of a fiery damage, and the second is an acid damage. So a total of two damage right. that you will take. Halved from four. You. And it then does. it doesn't stop burning you. <laughs> it burns! Uh, it is now your turn, Runar. Okay, I'm going to attack the spiders to myself. 
Yup. I like it. Hold on. Twenty-three for seven. Uh, that will hit for seven. But you you get the sense that it's not really doing as much damage as as normally would. This is after all a swarm, and they're they're hard to hit. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah. Okay, I will use my extra attack. Um. <laughs> Oh, I can't. Sorry. Can I um, drop the spear and pull another weapon as part of an like my free action and my attack action? Yeah, you can drop a weapon for free. Doesn't cost yeah. you anything, and you can draw a weapon as a free action. But I, can I draw it and attack with it? You can use your action to attack. Okay, so I'll drop the spear just at my feet. It gets tricky where you're trying to like stow a weapon and then draw another weapon. That's where you run into trouble. Okay. So that so this is fine if you're just dropping it on the ground. I'm just gonna drop it to the ground and pull a scimitar. Okay. My magic scimitar and use that for my extra attack here. Okay. Same swarm to the south. Yeah. Fifteen for nine slashing. Southern swarm with the scimitar. Yeah. Strike. Nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, 15 will hit as well as you crush through a couple of these things, slicing them. But again, you don't get the sense that you're you're getting as many of them as you wish you would. It's kind of crazy, actually, when it turn, you look at it strategically. These swarms can be a little bit more beefy than the actual giant spiders. It's kind of crazy. Oh, Anyways, are. yeah. Uh, anything else, Runar? Um, no. Okay. Brings us to Byron. Not to waste too much on these spiders. Byron, you've got spiders crawling up your boots right now. All right, Byron, uh, panic. He's gonna go spider dance. He's gonna um, disengage. Show us the spider dance and shake. He's gonna like. He's gonna like. You know where you're like swatting them off you and shaking your legs to get them off you as quick as possible. Um, disengage. Five, ten, fifteen. Sorry. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He's going to do a jump. He's going to pull his cloak around him and try and stop, drop, and roll like he's putting out a fire. He's going to try and put out this swarm that's right next to the Runar <laughs> that he's been swinging at. All right. I like it. I don't know. What would you call that? Uh, an improvised weapon attack? Uh, you're going you're gonna to try to put the cloak over the top of the spiders? No, I'm going to... I'm going to wrap the cloak tight around me and fall on the spiders and roll across them like a giant. Yeah, uh, that would be roller. sure. That would be, we'll call that an unarmed attack, which I don't believe you have proficiency in. So just nope. roll a strength attack. I like it. You've got heart kid. You've got heart. <laughs> That's what the spiders are trying to get at, so they can burrow in. That's true. To hit. They need a they need a place to nest. Uh, that will hit, and that will do one damage, and that is bludgeoning damage. And let me just double check something here. <laughs> yep, you do roll over them. <laughs> you roll right over them. Uh, anything else, Mr. Byron? No. I immediately am going to regret that, I'm sure of it. It's I'm already regretting it for you. All right. Uh, that brings us to... Sorry, I just did something silly. That brings us to Dan Virius. Dan Virius sees this swarm on Runar and is going to start swinging with his... With his, he draws a dagger. He's going to attack with his dagger. Don't hit Dag with a dagger. Uh, he does. He rolls a twenty-five and hits for. Wow, fourteen piercing damage. A. 
big hit. Halved. Uh, all right. He's so. backstabbing that son of a bitch. Yep. But he doesn't hit Deg. Uh, that brings us to Theo. Theo is going to kind of twist his hand on the far side of the pommel where the blue light is uh, glowing fiercely. Um, and, you know, vague waiting his Eldritch Blast to be more like the weird rings that you see in Star Wars that go pew, pew, um, hopefully to be more effective for shooting the spiders. It won't be. Uh, and he's going to attack that swarm of spiders to the north that no one is near because okay. they're staring at him with all their eyes. There's a lot of eyes. Come on, Travis Willingham. Don't let me down. I'll hail Willingham. Yeah, force damage does full damage on these guys as they get smashed. You see bits of mini spiders getting splashed across the rock wall behind them. They're still coming? They're still coming. We got another fresh servant of Eldritch Blast coming their way. Okay. Don't know what that was. Uh, that also hits for nine more. <clears throat> They're still up. There's very few of them, and they are still coming towards you. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, La Laura, save me. Laura, save me. Wow. All right. Uh, Tenok. <laughs> yeah. Um, huh. Yeah, I'm going to reach down betwixt betwixt his legs and cast Ray of Frost. Wait, wait, whose legs? Whose legs? Uh, Theo's. Aim low, aim low! As he's, <laughs> as he's in front of me. That's all I can do. I can only aim low. <laughs> That's true. He's already low. If there's I'm anybody not. you want between your legs, Theo, it's Tenok. I mean, if that's what Tenok's into, <laughs> I mean, he is an attractive and muscly man. That's, that's the option. Uh, hey. that will hit cold damage and they freeze against the ground and just shatter. Nice. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, and Runar is covered in spiders as is Byron. Correct. But not Danvarius. Uh, Byron is no longer covered in spiders, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, Runar is the one that's covered in spiders. If you okay. want to get, you know, specific. Okay. That's all I got, actually. All right. That brings us to the spiders themselves. Uh, Runar, they are attacking you en masse as they climb further up your chest towards your neck. Biting ah. with ah. advantage. Ah. Uh, the first ah. group misses, and the second group. Wow. Should have had advantage. Ah. Ah. I'm shaking in the right way. Wow. Uh, yep. Wow. They all miss you. They all miss you. Still nightmare fuel. Wow. Yep. And, but they are they are coming up around your neck and your face as they're crawling further and further up your head. It is your turn. All right, I'm going to keep attacking the one to my south. Twenty-eight for seven. Yeah, that hits. And extra attack. Ooh, 11. That one doesn't doesn't hit as you're sort of like, it's really awkward because you're sort of attacking against s creatures that are climbing on you. You're trying to like pry them off with your scimitar, which it doesn't seem to be the best tool for the job. And you're just not able to get that second hit in to do any damage. With the first one, you skewered a couple as they fall off onto the ground below you. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, Byron. All right, I'm going to stand back up. 
look down at some of the squash spiders that I squashed to see if I, you know, see that I didn't really do very much. Kind of be kind of bummed about it. Pull out my only remaining dagger because my other one I can't get. It's way up on the cliff top, way up here. Um, and I'm just gonna like sweep it across the whole entire, the, the whole group of them. Okay. Suspense feature. That hits. 19 for nice. yep. 16 damage. 16 piercing. Yes. Yep. There's still a few that are swarming, but not many. You've you killed a couple with that sh with that uh, stab of the dagger. Anything else from you? Nope. That's it. All right. Uh, Dan Virius is going to try to help Runar by stabbing more with his dagger very carefully so that he does not stab Runar. Oops. I rolled a there natural one. And he stabs into you, Runar, doing... Uh, Six piercing damage. Oh, sorry, sorry. Would that? I knew it. Kill him. All right. Would that technically beat my AC though? I don't know. Um. Yep, we're gonna it's say it you. did. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. It's Eight. stabs How many into did you. you say six? Uh, six piercing damage. Right. Welcome to the world of swarms, Anya. Yeah. yeah. Natural one. Sometimes when you um, do real bad, you do real good. Right. Unintentional good. <laughs> That's actually bad. So you're you're doing bad to do unintentional bad that seems like good if you have bad intentions. But if you have good intentions, it's not as good as it seems. Well, and of course, traditionally, the primary weapon for dealing with heavily armored foes actually ended up being the rondelle or the dagger to get through the armor. So in this case, he's actually using the proper technique. As much as I hate to say this right now, Theo, it is your turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was very nice of you then. I'm going to employ a traditional methodology for dealing with swarms of things on people. That, of course, being Eldritch Blast <laughs> at oh the northmost uh, set of spiders. It's very southern hospitality of you. Down south, we know how to handle things like swarms of spiders on people. Oh, yeah. Eldritch Blast. If in case you didn't know that, the entire southern power structure... Nothing but warlocks. That was actually the edge in the Civil War the South was hoping to lean on. Yeah, it didn't go so well for him, did it? No. Turns out, is isn't as effective as you think. I did not invoke Travis Willingham, and look what no, happened. Oh, yeah, you missed. As you, you try not to hit Runar, you saw what just happened, and in your slight hesitation, the Eldritch Blast flies wide of him. I have another one, and I will use it once more invoking he who rages and also has strange morality issues, our patron saint, Travis Willingham, for Eldritch Blast. Willing Blam! And it does shit. I have been yep. betrayed by my patron. It's time for a new patron, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, Tenok. Yeah, wow. Um, I will just funnel the power that is inside me that I control because... I don't have to have a, a patron. Mm -mm. You're uh, a learned, a learned one. Yeah, um, and I will use the learning that I got um, to cast Ray of Frost. Um, hopefully, targeting the uh, these these ones here, <laughs> and not Runar. Hopefully, not targeting Runar. Just don't roll a natural one. You'll be fine. This is like carefully hitting your keyboard with the uh, CO2 can. That's <laughs> right. You don't want to overdo it. Yeah. Hey, I think, that, I think I like that'll that. real well. That'll hit. <laughs> and you, uh, you, Runar, you feel this cold, cold sensation as you look down right below your, your <sighs> chest. What you can see is as this ray of frost hits these, somehow doesn't hit you. 
but hits these uh, these spiders. They freeze and they just fall to the ground. I like it. I kind of turn. I look over at Byron and I say, Byron, your precision is rubbing off on me. <laughs> He's a Anything doctor. else, Tenok? No, that's all I got. All right. Uh, there is still a single small swarm of spiders, Runar. You look down, you don't know where they are. You can feel them like crawling in your armor, <laughs> but you're not sure where, where they are. Um, they have disappeared from view as they get inside your armor and try to bite you. I don't know. Nope. They just can't seem to figure out what to do. They're babies. They're babies. They're just gumming you. It's like a baby zombie. Ain't yeah, got no teeth. Mm -hmm. just gumming That's you. That's right. It is your turn, Runar. Uh, at this point, a sword would not work because they're inside your armor. All you can do is try to smash or reach in and grab your call. All right. Um, uh, so mechanically, how would that work? Um, It'd be like an unarmed attack. So you could roll a, uh, an, a strength based or a, I would say you could do that, or I would allow a dex-based attack as you try to reach in real fast and grab it. Kind of a dexterity kind of attack to pull it out of your armor. Okay, I'll try that. So just straight dex? Yep, Roll. no proficiency okay. bonus, unless you're proficient in unarmed attacks, which I don't think no. yeah, you're not. No, no, I'm not. Sixteen. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Uh, that does oh. one damage, and uh, that's all it took. You oh, squash great. the one that was inside, and you pull it out, and it's in your hand, and it's just kind of dripping this blue knit, this blue on your gloves, and you throw it down on the ground. And you guys have defeated this small swarm of spiderlings. Byron, what have we learned? I'm gonna draw my, or I'm gonna pull my, I'm gonna have my dagger in my hand already. I'm going to immediately turn to Dan Varius and hold it to his throat real quick and be like, you stabbed Runar. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to well, help well, him. Well, I, I was trying to help. Yeah, Get off Irish. me. And he he kind of he kind of hits you away from him. By Byron, Byron, down, chill, down, chill. down. Here, I'll roll an attack. I'll roll a... Um, I'm going to go ahead and roll a... Uh-oh. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna try, he's just gonna try to beat you you know like kind of bash you away from him like get away from me i'm sick of it Trying to beat you off no mm. Mm. various hello <laughs> uh that's not gonna hit you it's a it's an 11 you know i'll i'll, I'll take a step back everyone's saying you know who's trying get to off me hun Call me by my last name. What are you, my uh, ILI coach? No, I thought he was your father. ILI. Those, those, those spiders were everywhere. You play highlight. All right. Ten Tenok, <laughs> roll a D20 for me. Yeah. God, we got to get out of here. <laughs> by we, you mean you, because you're the one standing in the way. Um... It bubbles, uh, and you start to see uh, Tenok as you look back towards uh, Byron and Dan Virus kind of having this little bit of a of a tiff. Dan Virus is probably a little bit closer right in this area. Uh, you see behind them, the water start to bubble and, and, and pulse upward like these small little p uh, pillars of water. Guys are. Guys are. Yeah, let's oh, get crap. going. Let's move. Pull Come on. Move back. Tuck roll. A Kaiser like a like a roll like do you have bread? <laughs> it's uh, it's uh. You guys dash away from the the potential geyser attack and make your way past these. You grab your spear. You make your way past these carcasses of spiders, and you get to the 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 dog leg left in this slot canyon. And we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break while we get ready for what lies beyond here in. The cauldrons. Spoiler alert: uh, tsunami yeah. of spiders. Possibly, 
If you are watching, folks, we encourage you to enter our giveaway tonight. We're going to be giving away encounters in Chult. So you'll have some awesome uh, jungle encounters for your game, uh, possibly, or for maybe your favorite DMs game. It's a great way to do it. All you have to do to enter is CZRPG, and we're going to go ahead and draw a winner at the end of tonight's session. In the meantime, we're going to take a bio break. We're going to get ready for the second half of tonight's game. So we'll see you all in just a couple of minutes. Bye. In hell. Bye. <laughs>
I might. Um, I don't really have a good way of of uh, holding any of this stuff. Never mind. A part of me wants to be like, I would keep some of that spider blue acid, but I don't have a good place to store it. So I will not do so. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to take baby animals from their parents. We just killed their parents. You're their mom now. You're and right. The babies. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna harvest as many crystals as I can. <laughs> You're you gonna grab crystals? Like little, sure. I'm gonna grab a bunch of them with throw uh, them like the little bombs. Bomb. Roll a nature check. Remember what I asked? Just did we learn anything? Clearly, the answer was no. I learned that it, killing the parents of animals leaves them helpless to uh, nature. You there. chisel more of these things off of the wall and pick up some of those that have piled at your feet. Nothing happens. You have some blue canyon crystals. How many, we'll how many say, would you say? We'll say that you have... Ro go ahead and roll 2d8. Because how often do you roll an 8-sided die? Not enough. I, I got a 10. You have 10 blue crystals. Canyon crystals from the cauldrons. All right, you press on. Moving. Yes, yeah. you press on. Yeah, and Runar, it, will you grab my dagger? Ooh, it's it's way up there. I'll have my hawk grab it. Ah, oh, sweet. Is it After like a lady hawk? No. Your hawk goes to the carcass. <laughs> Yep. And tugs on the knife. Roll a strength check for the for the hawk for me. Oh yeah. Natural twenty. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh. Six. It just can't seem to get the <laughs> dagger out of the out of the face ah! of this giant spider. How it high squawks up is at you. Uh, what the does canyon it walls. What sound does it make? It makes I don't know a little something like this. Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to hear the hawk. Sound effects didn't work that time, Dave. I heard them. I don't even Here. see the, the sound go. effects thing in our chat. Oh, maybe he's not. Maybe we didn't yeah. even do the sound effects this time. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Is there no music in the stream? Shit happens, either? guys. You know what? Shit <laughs> yeah. happens sometimes. Yeah. You don't you don't get set up in time, you know. You can't be perfect all the time, right? No. Nope. Sometimes nope, mistakes really are made. <laughs> um, but yes, there was a hawk. It sounded like but better. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it can sound better. That was pretty wonderful. It's it's about twenty five feet up, Runar. Uh pretty sheer canyon walls and you can see that there the giant spiders kind of slumped over the edge of the the lip of the canyon with its giant legs kind of dangling down you can see a knife stuck between its eyes um does it look like there's a safe spot for me to try to jump up and get it you could certainly try no, no, no! Forget about it. Forget about it. It's not. Or it's not uh, that big a deal. Could, I will pull up a dagger and to Byron because I like him. Oh, okay, that gives me two because I, I always want to have at least one because I got rid of my ranged attack. All I have left is uh, uh, is throwing a dagger now. We could try pulling the spider down with a grappling hook. Hey! Now we're talking. Let's get this wild. This can only go well. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to back right. away from who's ever on the <laughs> bottom end of that rope. <laughs> I'm throwing it. All right. You want to throw it or should I throw it? Mm, you throw it. Is it what what kind of th how would I throw that with decks? Acrobatics maybe? Huh? You heard it that time. Yeah, yeah. Nope. <laughs> there it I is. Think, I think it's dex, yeah. but I'm not It's 100%. a it's a it's a dex based attack roll. Okay. You're trying to basically hook the spider and pull it down? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, give it a shot. All right. 
careful, Ooh. careful. Ah, Ten. shit, here, here. Dig, let me, let me try. And Danveria steps forward. All right. He's going to give it a shot here. Uh, dexterity. Uh, 14. Let's mm. just see how difficult of a DC this is. Oof, he doesn't get it either. Oh, it's tough. All right, all right. Yeah. My turn, my turn. <laughs> how much your daggers worth? Hold on, Dan, hold on, hold on. I'm at this point, much. Dan Dan Virius yeah, turns to you, uh, turns to you, Runar, and says, five gold says he doesn't get it. You know, I have a solution for this, guys. He already rolled. No, we'll, we'll let him roll again. Five gold. Right. What do you say? Yes. Five gold. All right, all right. Go ahead. All right, all Go right. Ahead. Five gold. Five gold. <laughs> ah, shit! And he pulls he pulls out his a little pouch that he has with five and pulls five gold and hands it to you. As Byron throws the grappling hook and hooks the spider and starts to pull it down, and as he does, it starts to topple and falls down oh, the whoa, side of the comes. canyon. Yo, look out! I'm gonna get the heck out of its way. <laughs> it after lands it in front of you. Yep. After it lands, Theo makes a gesture. A mage hand appears next to him. The mage hand floats over, pulls the dagger out, floats the dagger back up to the top of the precipice, and then brings it back down. I feel goes, like the, the mage hand has to roll Yo. a strength check. If my hawk had to roll a strength check, the, the, the mage hand has to roll You could have done that the whole time. Yes. Theo! <laughs> well, that, that's no fun. All right, is let's it, move. Now, is Come it? on. Yeah, we got to Daylight, it's Daylight's a burning. Cheat bit of a cheat i'd say but all right all right fan square and he hands over the gold to you runar just got oh, yeah. all <laughs> all right you guys press on and you continue down the canyon you come to a second fork where one slot canyon very narrow heads to the south in a fairly uniform 10 foot wide 15 foot in some spots canyon heads farther into the west of this region that you're in and you hear in the distance the eruption of a geyser and you can as you look up you can see over the ridge line of these canyons the the steam and the the splatter of this hot mineralized acidy water that splashes all over not near you, but you can see it erupting in the distance. I will. I'll hold my hand up and say, uh, "Let me scout ahead," and I'll I'll have my uh, hawk kind of go out. I uh, made probably a couple of minutes flight both directions and kind of see what kind of things are around. Okay. Roll a perception check for your hawk. Good use of the hawk as a scout, by the way. Familiars are worth their weight in gold. And uh, actually, weight in platinum, uh, really. So, uh, so 12. Okay. That, that, that roll strangely works out. Because <laughs> my bonus is plus four. Um, also, roll a, roll a dexterity save for me for the hawk. For the hawk? All mm -hmm. right. Let me look at that. Hmm. 12. Also a 12. Okay. So as the hawk is flying, and you, you don't see this because it's beyond your the range of your ability to see through its eyes, but we, we fade away to the hawk soaring overhead. And there it is looking ahead. It sees below it to the south what appears to be a rock slide that has fallen and slid down as if the side of the canyon has broken apart for whatever reason. It, unable to sort of analyze what that geologic sort of backstory might be. But nonetheless, there's a rock pile and many of the rocks in the area are covered in a thick mat of webbing. There are more of these blue crystals that are even higher density than you saw previously in this area as well. That's as it flies to the south, it gets that view. As it swoops around past that, there is an eruption as a geyser 
blows beneath it, shooting up, barely missing it as it as it moves to the to the left, swooping around it. A little bit of drops maybe hitting it, but not, no effect as it flies farther west and takes a look and. It, it sees as it communicates back to you through your magical stuff that you've got going on. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it gives you a, a vision of this broad, relatively broad open space to the west. And there is distinctly a fissure, a large fissure that cuts across the space, bubbling, boiling, and obscured by the, the steam that's coming out of it. So it doesn't, you can't really see what's there, but it can see that there's a rift with steam bubbling. It's, uh, it's possible there are more spiders to the south and a large open expanse to the west. Maybe some steam, some of these geysers. What say you, my friends? All right, let's keep moving. Which Be direction? careful. Do we continue west into what is apparently the heart of this territory, or go south into the spider crevice? I guess. Well, well you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not really selling the spider crevice. Yeah, uh, let's not go to the spider crevice. I've had enough spiders for one day. But if nothing else, we've learned something from this whole adventure, which is side quests are always more interesting and profitable. So the spiders probably have, you know, six magic weapons and a dozen suits of armor trapped in there. What adventure have you been on? Well, and where were we? They're apparently really good conversationalists, and I'll glare at Byron. <laughs> we took their young. We took their. I mean, you know what? It, you next time, there was next time, there was a just one in three chance that worked. Just use your blade next time. It's what if what if they had left it, this it's alone? It's hard, what if, but just what if it they had more left effective. This alone? My friend, may I ask you a question, Byron? Are you a druid? No, you, God well, no. Then you are most likely not actually able to speak to spiders. If we had a druid, that would be very different. Danvarius, are you a druid? No, Danvarius is not a druid. Mm. Uh, no. I once talked to a frog, though, and it and it walked away. Yes, we've all talked to a frog before and listened to us that one time. That's how no, 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 no. work. The important what? part is we're going west. Let's go. Yeah, let's go to that main fisher area. Um, that direction. I feel who, that's just disingenuous to the French, but yes. Who wants to roll a d6 for me? I'll do it. All right. <laughs> Runar fears neither God nor man. Six. Yes. Natural that has, six. That has to That's be good. That's how right? it's done. <laughs> six That's ogres. That's probably horrible. You, can, you continue to the west, and as you pass through this area, you look up, and you see that there is what appears to be a kettle of vultures that are, that are spiraling high above you, Runar, as you look up into the air. You're the first one to see them. There are a dozen vultures, um, and they are flying in a big circle, round and around, up, directly above you, as if they're waiting for something to happen. Hmm. Are they? Ju they're just like normal vultures. They're not like dire insane, vultures. Insane mutated vultures. <laughs> Secretly druid uh, vultures. <laughs> <laughs> roll, <laughs> roll, roll a nature check. Shooting out of their chests. Oh god! What do you see? Or like they're directly above us. Yep. Twenty. They yeah they appear to be like you've seen vultures before mm -hmm. on the battlefields where your fallen comrades lay dead, uh, where the bodies uh, have fallen and the birds feed. It's like an ominous. It's an ominous portent of perhaps what might be to come or what has transpired already. Mm. There, there's something dead up ahead. Or we're already dead, don't know it yet. Or they're waiting for their next meal. Let's keep moving. Going there is going to be our next meal. Let's go. Yeah. Vulture loaf? Nope. <laughs> 
Ugh. No it could, it'd that. probably go really well with claw wine. I mean, you're probably not wrong. Give me seagull <laughs> loaf any day. Enough claw That's wine and anything goes amazing. good. You continue on, undeterred by the strange kettle of vultures circling above. And as you do, you come around the corner of, of this canyon as it starts to open up and you see the path to the south that you intend to bypass and you continue west. And as you do, you come across what appears to be some sort of a creature that is lays dead in front of you. Is there anybody we know? Um, roll an investigation check as you kind of kneel down to take a look at it. Oh shit, what happened to you, Theo? You dropped out. Oh, no. Yeah. Where did he go? Audio, though? I don't know. He must have hit the wrong button. He's yeah, going to roll. Did some my internet dice just and... drop? No, just yeah, your you video. Just, your, your audio video dropped. There. It hiccuped. Oh, yeah. Come come back to us. The <laughs> Necromancer Theo has been for a long, long time. Now it's time for him. He's not in uh, Roll Twenty anymore either. Oh, you just had to bounce out of Discord too. Oh no! Somebody it else dropped. roll a uh, investigation back. check. All right. I got it. Runar's got it. Oh wow! He rolled one though. We'll take Theo's. Oh, Theo rolled it. Oh, he's yeah. His it appeared... back already. Oh, he's back! Wow! Look at you! You've changed, huh? <laughs> we you but dropped out of Discord. Discord. You're not on Discord. Reconnect. There you are. Well, now you're on Discord. Am. Oh, are you back now? For real? I am technology. back. Don't That's tease us like that. God, God, man. Let me turn everything off. No, no. Um, all right. So Theo, you you take a look at this carcass, and it is a relatively fresh kill. Although it is dried uh, and it has been scavenged, you can see that there are three large claw marks that transect the dorsal side of what appears to be some sort of a large ape-like creature. Much larger than one of Byron's baboons. Uh, almost in the parlance of Dungeons and Dragons, it would be a large creature. Hmm. It appears that our friend with the claws has been here recently and ran into our friend who is the ape, who is now very dead. Um, that, that's all I have. Watch out for those tr little things, tumor things. That's why I'm not touching it. You, yeah, you don't see any strange growths on it, but you definitely see the claw mark that uh, gives you a bit of a recollection of the marks that you saw on the side of the Dry Dock Tavern when you investigated below the window hmm. the morning after. I got that. Yep. Uh, so I'm just kind of relaying that for folks who might not remember that. Um, but you do press on. You had you continue west. And as you do, everybody roll a perception check for me. No. I'm going to use one of my advantages. I got an eight. Byron rolled pretty well. Yep. Yeah, I got a twenty-three. Thirteen. It was, it was not a. It was an easy DC, but uh, Runar and Theo, you don't hear it. The first to hear it is Byron, and then Tenok as well. You hear what it sounds like. Well, it's unmistakable. The sounds of struggle ahead, and a snarl, a bellowing snarl of a beast. I'm gonna. There's I'm gonna, combat uh, ahead. We need to move fast. Let's run, and I'm gonna dash. I'm just Let's gonna go. dash. Yep, we'll start rushing. Okay. Give me one second here. Uh... Actually, I'm gonna dash. I'm gonna try and get ahead of everyone, and then I'm gonna try and stop them. Okay. Go if ahead and uh, roll initiative. Let's do that. Everybody roll initiative. 
I but I don't little, have my I think can I have a little guy my little guy oh, yeah. do we have a map for that there is a map for that oh, there's an app for that <laughs> there's a roll for mine I got a 21 <coughs> Ooh. don't get too excited yet we're just we're just rolling initiative to see who goes where okay I got me a 17. All right, so it looks like Tenok. 25. Oh, it looks like Runar has Holy the advantage. Shit. God damn, Deg. So what do you do, Runar? You seven. have you have the uh, you have the lead in this. Byron is kind of trying to get in front of you. Um, I'm just gonna smack my shield with my spear. And just start charging up, not like full force, but kind of cautiously, kind of like waiting to see if there's something coming around. Kind of like, you know, if I was to be running ahead, I'd be like, I'd slow down a little bit around this corner and then I'd like rush up to this corner. You know what I mean? Like kind of cautiously, but moving fast. I'll, uh, you can get to this spot right here with 30 feet of movement. Okay. You say, oh. Uh, uh, as you do yep. it. Theo, mm -hmm. uh, or Byron, you're not in the order Oof. here. Let me get you in there. Let me get you. What'd you roll? 21. Okay. What's Same your uh, me. dex, Tenok? A 17. I got 18. Well, that's my strength. Uh, uh, my strength is 11. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to move 5, 10, 15, 20... 25 30 i'm gonna reach out i'm gonna i'm gonna put my hand on on runar's shoulder i'm gonna whisper you wanted to look at it before we engaged remember yes we must hurry though it sounds like someone might be in trouble they're already boned they're done for <laughs> <Move. All right. laughs> tenok do you follow suit oh, and race wow. forward yeah. Um I uh, no. Um I am going to cast enhance ability on myself. Um and enact the power of cat's grace. Um gaining the litheness and the traversing ability of Mother Tiger herself. Um and I will um Ultimately, uh, what that does is target has advantage on dex checks and doesn't take fo damage from falling at twenty feet or less. Um, which okay. Maybe, you know, maybe isn't the best use of my of that spell, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, and I am going to gain some height on the situation and um, make to climb up. The canyon wall uh, to my right. Okay, there's a there's a rock pile that has fallen and blocks a pass to the north, and you're able to sort of scurry up that to get up onto that ledge. Uh, on the this side or this either side? one either side if your movement allows it. Okay, that's a good question. Let's see. Uh, Let's roll a uh, roll a climbing check. Roll a athletics check. Oh, I will. I will. Oh. Yep, twenty-five. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, 10, 15, 20, 25. I guess that'll give me. I'm on. I'm on top of the scree pile. I'm a halfling. Okay. Who isn't a monk? My movement you, is rare. But you do get up on the scree pile. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Is there anything else that you want to do besides that? Uh, there are. Or in addition um, to. Plenty that I would like to do, but nothing that I can do. <laughs> better. Better question. Thank you. I will rephrase next time. <laughs> Theo. It's your no turn. Worries. No worries. No worries. If Theo is moving forward 30 feet. The player would request that we share this wonderful map with our people watching the stream. 
Five, uh, six, we can 50, probably 20, make that happen. 25, 30. And then Theo will enact um, the great... No, he's not. Can I move 30 feet more? You can dash. I'll dash. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. What do I, I see? You come around the corner. And as the scene comes into view, you see a bronze-skinned man poised in a fighting stance with his back to you. What appears to be a scimitar held tightly as if anticipating an attack from some unseen assailant. At his feet, there is a second individual lying on the ground, convulsing violently. And that is your turn. Your action was to dash. As a free action, I'll go, uh, hello? Very well. That brings us to a creature. And Theo, you're the only one that sees this happen. In a flash, you watch as this huge creature blinks into view before the man. You oh, immediately God. realize the gravity of the situation. This once beetle-like chimera of aberrant biology towers above him. Four hook-like pinchers snapping rapidly as spiked tentacles lash out in all directions. The creature's abdomen, once lion-like in appearance, still covered in hair but now distended and perched upon three pairs of insect-like legs. The creature, Musenji, lashes out with a long tentacle, pulling the man towards its gaping maw. Uh, ah, no. <laughs> and it is Musengi's turn. It is going to make a tentacle strike against this bronze-skinned man. Now we get some music. This and is not music I want to hear. It's it really hits bad. hard with a 21. Ooh. And you watch as the tentacles wrap around this man. And Theo, you're, again, the only one that can see this from your from the angle that you're at. And it, it kind of pulls him forward in his spot. And you watch as it takes this mandible bite as all four of these pinchers clamp down on him. It's second attack. The, pi the piercing mandible attack. Is that what it's called? It's a pierce, yep, piercing mandible attack. And Theo, it tears him apart and drops him to the ground. As it gulps down the top half of him and swallows it. Dude. It's here, and it can turn invisible. It is Dan Virius' turn, and he races forward. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And he will dash as well. He gets up against the wall and looks over there and looks at you, Theo, and he just says, Well, that's disgusting as he draws mm -hmm. his bow. <laughs> he draws his bow and res it, readies it for the next turn. And we are back at the top of the order. I need uh, I need somebody to roll a d6 for me. Why don't you, Theo, since you're in front, why don't you roll a d6? Oh, this is so bad. I got a wine. You look to your right, Theo, as you hear this bubbling. <laughs> and this pool right next to you right here i don't know if that's yep that should oh, ping right there no. erupts i need you to make a dexterity saving throw please yeah oh very nice very nice easy so we've got uh three so a total of four damage. Three of it is like a fiery, hot, boiling damage, and the other is a one of poison, so you take two damage. Uh, and it is Runar's turn. 
make Dan. Oh, Dan Beerus has to make a uh, saving throw as well. He is within the the range. Let me do that real quick. Dan Beerus. Deck save. Uh, 16. So he'll take two damage as well. Lord Gazumba just showed up with 77 Raiders. Oh! oh TPK, good timing. Whoa! Oh, yeah, no nice kidding. timing, guys. Seriously, yeah. welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. We, welcome. Our party has just began to battle the Mosengi, a strange, aberrant creature that they've been chasing for pretty much, I don't know, 12 sessions, maybe? Uh, and here we are oh, in wow. the cauldrons on the Cybert Isle in Greyhawk. So welcome. It should be right up your alley. We appreciate it. If you want to enter to win some fun stuff, type in CZRPG into the uh, the chat box. And uh, just like Kai Whimsy there, uh, as we get back to the battle. Top of the order, if want, Runar. If you want to help okay. keep us alive, donate 100 bits to somebody. <laughs> Runar <laughs> is going to... <laughs> we can get. <laughs> um... Ah, Runar's going to run. I'm just going to turn to Byron. Byron, it's too late. We're just going to run up. One, two, three. I'm going to move to there. Um, okay. Uh, you, see the same, you see the same thing. You see that this, this creature towering above this half-eaten body. Another body of this, what appears now to be a, a humanoid, is convulsing on the ground. Um, oh. all four of you, all four of you now have an advantage. Yes. Ooh. Ooh, thank you. Nice. Thank you to Canadian Ancient Gamer for the support. Pat I, I... also gave one to whoever needs it. I think the DM <laughs> needs it. Is what, what I'm thinking. I'm gonna do that. And no, I'm gonna <laughs> that. Doesn't need anything. He has a um, little Okay, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna hold here. I'm gonna take the dodge action, and I'm just gonna say, everybody, move up, quickly. I mean, I was already ahead of you, Captain. Uh, Byron. All right, I'm gonna move five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. I'm gonna whip out. Well, I already have my dagger. Um. <laughs> Everyone but Byron I'm has an advantage. 35 feet? Can you throw a dagger 35 feet? Um, uh, at disadvantage. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to throw one of my daggers. Okay. And I'm going to use one of my advantages. So it's a straight so roll. So it's just a straight roll. Wow, oh, baby. You throw the dagger and it goes wide and ricochets off some of the rocks just shy of the creature. Uh-oh. Um, I'm going to bonus action dash by um, 5, 10, 15, 20 feet, and I'm going to regret it immediately and move back five feet. Oh, uh, <laughs> Zim Colo just felt bad and gave you an advantage as well, by Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> come on, come on. What a guy. I'm just about Getting to kill Byron. From the party. All right. All right. So, Byron, that's your turn. That's it. That brings us to Tenok. Oh, man. I am going to continue my trajectory of movement across this scree and up to the top of the thing here, uh, top of the canyon wall. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Um. Yes, sir. Where'd everybody go? What oh. happened? What yes. happened? Uh, welcome we, back, mi amigo. Did we break the back? internet again? Yeah. Oh, uh, man. I think we broke the back? internet. 
We did. Yeah. We back ish. It's on ours. We're back died. ish. Yeah. Oh well. It's, the stream looks like it's locked up still. It's coming. We're not locked up. We're back. Okay. So sorry, Tenek. I did not hear what you said. I didn't say anything other than, "Oh God, you disappeared." <laughs> yeah. What happened? Uh, what happened? What happened? That I, was fun. Yeah. Is this? I mean, is the stream back? Not that it matters that much. It kind of seems that it is. I don't know. Reconnection successful. It said. Okay. Way um, to go, OBS. Hooray, internet. Um, I am going to um, unleash uh, a third level magic missile at this creature that I can see. Okay. Uh, which is, if I double check myself. Uh, magic a missile. Five, a, f a five, a five dot spread. So here is five, and then it'll be plus five. So 11 uh, total damage? 11 force damage. Okay. Yes, sir. Let me just jot that down. Got it. All right. Uh, Theo. Oh boy. Um, Theo is going to make a gesture and uh, arcane energy just sweeps out and up his arm from the blade and courses over his whole body, leaving um, the armor of Agathis in its spiky, icy, blue gloriousness around him. Nice. Uh, and then sweeps out through his far hand, which he points at the Mash Mashravi? Mosengi. Mosengi, which he sweeps at the Mosengi, which uh, forms for a moment shackles of um, green or blue glowing runes um, that are the Wrath of the Blade Bearer as my bonus action. And then as my move action, I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, uh, 20, whoa, tw got 25 to kind of get between Byron and tentacle death because i like byron and know he's a little squishy as you do that it is going to use a legendary action and you watch as this giant bubble of blue vomit spews forth as wretched spittle flies across and lands right in your space theo uh and it's going to actually affect both you and byron I have already okay. failed in my gambit. As it splashes, I'm going to use my advantage because that's what I do. I use them as I get them, folks. Uh, that's a 17. Hit. To both Byron and Theo. This <coughs> misses me. Why am you... I trying to do you then? <laughs> uh, it hits you, I was wondering. Theo, and you take 10 poison damage. Um, oh, good. I need I'm you trying. to take make a DC 13 con save, please. Oh, well, don't you know? I think a 22 might be okay then. A 22 yes. is good. You take half of that, so only five poison damage. And you do not suffer from the poisoned condition. Anything else, Theo? Gosh, I think that's enough. Um, yeah, other than you're covered cool. in blue, blue <laughs> acid goo, and it's it's just like sitting there so smoldering on the spikes. And Theo, Theo's like, ah, -ha! Uh. you watch Theo, Runar, Byron, and maybe even Dan Virus can see as the creature reaches down with one of its tentacles, grabbing what's left of this this person that was fighting it pulls it towards its maw eats him and then disappears from view oh my god 
All right. And it is now Dan Viris' turn. And he is going to make a... He's going to move forward. And try to see where to go! He will make a... Perception check. It can become invisible. And he has no freaking clue. But he will ready an action to fire his bow when he sees it. Uh, that brings us to Runar. Okay, Runar is going to run up. Um, get to the woman. She needs help. I'm just going to... One, two, three. And I'll use... Ah. Uh, um, just nervous that the thing is going to pop back into view. I'm going to take the dodge action. Okay. Um, as you run forward and see this woman lying on the ground convulsing, you also notice that she has one of these cysts that you've become familiar with that is attached to her face. Of course She's she got does. a face hugger. And uh, she is continues to sort of uh, convulse and seizure on the ground in front of you. Uh, that brings us to Byron. All right. I'm going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to see the face hugger. I'm going to go into Dr. McKill and Gutty mode. I'm going to mm -hmm. try and amputate the cyst violently. Right. Roll it off. Go ahead and roll, going, a, I'm going go, to roll a medicine it. check. Oh, okay. Yep. Roll medicine check for me as you r race forward. You are, you do fancy yourself, I guess, as a bit of a doctor. You know, I'm going to use one of my advantages. All right. A 16. A 16 will do it. Uh, go ahead and roll your attack on this creature to pull it off with advantage. Sixteen. A sixteen will indeed hit. And you are are you trying to pull it off or are you trying to stab it and kill it? Um I'm gonna go with I'm trying to remove it violently with my knife. Okay, by doing damage. You do a total of twenty damage. Yep. Yep. You uh you stab into it and it, it starts to ooze this black icker. Uh, over this woman's face. You can see that it's a woman now in her hair. And as you do, it releases from her face and drops to the ground next to her. And she, as her face is uncovered, you just see eyes wide open, not blinking, and her mouth is wide open as if something was had been pushed down inside of her mouth and then pulled out. Okay. Um... Gross. Okay, that's my turn. Uh, do this for me before the end of your turn by roll a d6. A two. All right, let's see. This second geyser erupts right here next to Dan Virius. And I believe... Theo, I'm going to need a dexterity save from you and Dan Virius. Ooh, Dan Virius fails with a five. I and you, you fail as well, so you take six fire damage, we'll call it, and oh shit, six poison damage. And uh, that brings us to Tenok. Being um, the creature <clears throat> vanish, um, I I uh, reach into uh, my vest in into a pouch I have, and I take uh, I, I take my hands out, and they're kind of powdered in in silver, and I draw above on my forehead um, four sets of eyes 
and mm. all eight of my or all six of my eyes open and I cast invisibility see or rather I'm sorry see invisibility mm. okay nice hoping that this fucker is in <laughs> fact invisible and didn't do something else <laughs> You do see the creature uh, too uh, far to the west, just on the other side of the uh, the other side of this chasm. And there's no really good mechanical way for me to show it to you without showing it to everybody else, which I don't really want to do. So, everybody, close your eyes. <laughs> this is so old school, but everybody can do it. <laughs> Nobody uh. look but me. That includes viewers, you, Michael. Viewers, viewers, you can look. I'm looking yeah, at Yeah, viewers can look. I'm not looking right. at the screen. All right, nobody look except for Tenok. Okay. Okay, don't look yet. <laughs> this is it. so dumb. I see it. No, this is perfect. <laughs> all right, all right, you this can look perfect. again. You can look yeah, again. You can look. <laughs> you can look again. That's This yeah, is old school, baby. Yeah, I like it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did too, actually. I will shout, I will shout, uh, good buddies, above you. Um, and that was probably my action. That's the end of my turn. Okay, that brings us to Theo. There's a lot of above me, that case. Um... <laughs> it might not have been as specific as you'd hoped. Yeah, you know. <laughs> It's battle. It's battle time. Yeah, battle talk. Dodge battle action. talk with Tenek Knucklebones. Just dodge action, waiting for something to happen, sword at the ready. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, that brings us to the creature. And although it does not itself come into view. Actually, you know what? It'd be cooler if it did. It comes into view. <laughs> nope, it doesn't. View. It is going to come over here. And it comes into view right next to Dan Virius. Oh, no, and it Dan is Virius. going to attack him with a tentacle strike first. Uh, 22 hits. He's going to take uh, 10 bludgeoning damage and 5 poison damage, so 15. He needs to make... He has grappled, and it is going to follow up with a, a bite attack. However, this is different than the mandibles. You watch as its mouth, this gaping maw pulls back and a second set of teeth come forward and clamp down over him taking a huge bite out of him uh 19 is gonna hit holy crap uh 22 oh, no. what are you piercing rolling, damage <laughs> wow uh he takes 30 damage oh no <laughs> <Damn serious. laughs> what and he needs to make a wisdom save real quick. Oh no, it went after Dan Various. Yeah, yep. and just murdered him. Yeah, yep. just he just took like 30 plus damage. He did. And From even more secondary mandibles. Even more unsettling. And actually I need to roll a d6 cuz this is one of those recharge abilities. Recharge. Okay. Uh even more troubling is you watch as this creature sloughs out of this large remember how i described it as this hairy distended abdomen it mm -hmm. drops something out onto the ground in front of you what appears what? to be some sort of a worm what is what is what yep <laughs> what <laughs> and that is its turn That's... brings us to dan various dan various is going to disengage <laughs> Yeah. And run. Jeez. Ah, it's trying to impregnate that various with that worm. Uh, it is now Runar's turn. I'm going to run up to... We lost Michael again. Yeah. is Ma um, Michael, are I you in the chat? Hello? 
Yes. He's you back. Come, you're not in video. Come I, back to I us. See you. I see oh. you. Can you not see me? No. We cannot see you, my friend. No, sir. We'd probably have to restart I, the I browser or something. I do see him. That's this so battle weird. is breaking the internet left and right. I'm gonna run up to, th run over to Theo on to. Maybe just try reconnecting Theo. And just say, Michael. Nuclear option. War crime. <laughs> uh, I, I was thinking about this. And um, I'm gonna take one step forward and. Oh God. Two I guess. Back. Uh, I'll attack this little grub thing that popped out. I like to call it a crisis maggot. Jesus. All right. Let's do this. Maggot. Hey, Michael's back. Hey. You look different. Hey, Some, is, did you left. change something? Everything about me. <laughs> Just to fit in with you guys. Ooh, 26. that'll hit. There yeah, 26 go. definitely hits as you carve through it. Um... Okay, I'm going to use my extra attack. Five piercing, okay. Seventeen. Uh, that also hits for seven. Uh, I will just, uh, I will hold it at that. Okay. Uh, Byron. All right, is this, did I kill the cyst? You did. On this, that was on this lady? All right, I'm gonna reach yep. into my pouch and I'm gonna pull the last human potion I have and dump it down her throat, hoping that it does something. Um, and then, if, if, if possible, can I, can I drag her further away from it? Uh, sure, yep, roll, a, roll an athletics check for me. And roll the uh, roll the healing as well. So she regains nine hit points. Okay. And I'll pull her with a five. I'll say you can get her about half your movement. So I'll pull her to the square south of me here. Okay easy enough she does not appear to be conscious her eyes are still wide open you do hear like a gurgle though as the potion goes down her throat um that's all i can do all right tenok oh boy um uh... Quickly trying and failing to find the fucking jumping rules. That's super annoying. Um, I think I have them right here, maybe. Yeah, jump in. What are you trying to do? I long just want to know, like, what a normal. A, what's like can, a normal long jump? So if you move ten feet and jump, yep. uh, the number of feet is equal to your strength score. If you're standing jump, it's oh. half that. Okay. Um, I, okay, that's, actually, that's perfect. That's fantastic. Um, I am going to, I think at this point, that. fire a, uh, ray of frost at this, at this duder. Okay. Um, and I will use one of my advantages. Come on, come on, come on. I mean, that'll work. Yeah, Yeah, that'll hit. 26 just hits. 20, 26, 10, da 10 damage and uh, minus... Um, 10 to its speed. Minus 10 to its speed. Um, I am going to uh, back up and run and jump this gap. As you do that, it's going to use a legendary action. What? That was a dumb idea. <laughs> and is going to pounce. 
next to Dan Virius. Oh, shit balls. Oh, God. Is Dan Virius going to get eaten? I hope so. Wait, it's not his turn yet, though. <laughs> no. Nope. I mean, um, uh, no. Legendary just... actions don't give a shit whose turn it is. No, it's at the end of a turn. So it's it's uh, Theo's turn next. That wasn't the end of my turn. Oh, it wasn't? I'm sorry. Well, I mean, okay, now it's the end of my turn. Oh boy. Pedantically, yeah, sorry, I apologize. Yeah, no, that's I'm what good. a what a diva. Tenak is such a little diva. <laughs> All right, Theo. Yeah, nuclear option isn't going to work. Um Theo says as he charges forward to swing a snickery snack with his at, with his sword at this thing. Snackums and thwackums. Mostly cuz I can't get a clear fucking shot with uh you know, yeah. where it would be. But yep. I'm going to move up it. here to get that there advantage on this motherfucker. I don't like go. him. Does a 21 hit? 21 hits. And that's three more damage on top of that because of the um, Blade Bear's Wrath. So it's actually 14 slashing. And here 14. comes the second attack. Okay. That will also hit. Very nice. For 20 total slashing. Okay. Just yeah, two big, up. big cuts into its back as you slice through this swollen abdomen and it starts to drip. The, and and uh, and seep this blue, strange blue acidy goo. Just right. great. Yep. Um, but uh, bonus action, cry a little bit. That's all I've got. Okay. That brings us to the creature. And having two of you on either side of it, it is going to use something called the Whirlwind of Claws, as it swings its feet around in a circle. And each creature within 10 feet is going to be, uh, actually, let's see. How far is Tenok? How high up am I is the real question. Um, yeah, you're on the ledge. So this will not affect you because they're down on the lower level. So let's see what happens. Because that sounds bad. I don't want to. Uh, it's only a 17. Still hits. Uh, that's going to be 12 slashing. Um, actually, take, make a de make a dexterity save to see if you take full damage or half. Twenty. Uh, you take half damage, and Dan Virius will take full damage. Theo, is the armor of Agatha's god? Fourteen damage. So you take seven, Theo. Okay. Um, and the armor of Agathis explodes on this motherfucker and does 20 points of cold damage to him. All right. It has one hit point left. What was the total damage on it? Sorry, 20? 20 wow. cold. Got it. Okay. Oh, yeah, I could have that spell. As that happens, it is going to uh, swing at you or bite at you with its mandibles, Theo, in response with its second attack. What an a-hole. Yeah. Uh, 19? Yeah, that hits. Uh, for 22 damage. He takes 20 cold as that ends. Okay. Nice. It explodes and it ripples across its carapace and its its abdomen freezing it and as it does it drops another chrysos maggot onto the ground oh, I don't like that a little bit smaller than the last one uh and then it it's Dan Virus' turn. Dan Virus, it looks terrified. He is scrambling to get away. He sees Tenok up above him, and he is going to he is going to disengage and keep running. Five, 10, 15, 20, 
15, 20, and then he's going to try to climb up around the corner here with an athletics check. Uh, which he doesn't, he's not skilled in, so a strength check, which he's not great at. He rolled an 11, so we'll say he gets halfway up the, the side of this cliff. Runar. Oh, boy. Runar, 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 Runar. Okay, I'm going to, I guess I keep attacking this um, crisis maggot that I've been hitting already. Mm-hmm. Yet. An 11 is not going to hit, but I, I do need you to roll a d6 for me because I forgot to do that at the top of the round. Pew Oof. pew. So the second one is going to erupt again. I need everybody within 15 feet of it, so that's going to be Theo. The Chrysos Maggot, the creature, that Chrysos Maggot, Runar, to make dexterity saves. All right. Um, should I, can I finish my turn first? Uh, no, go ahead and do it. Okay. 16. Dex save? So, yep. Ooh, one saves, one fails. 25. 18. Nice. Okay, so you guys both save. And the creature fails. So if you if you succeeded, take half of this. So take five. Everyone else takes ten. Including this guy. Okay, now you can finish your turn. Okay, extra attack on the worm. Okay. There we go, 24, yeah, 7. That'll hit. You cut through it, and it's just wriggling beneath your blade as if it's on its last roll. It doesn't really Riggle? have legs. Wriggle? Yeah. But it's still up. It's still, yeah, it's still wriggling. Oh, it, fuck. Um, let me see one thing. Um... I will expand a superiority dice to make that a menacing attack. Okay. And I'll add that to the damage. Oh, fuck. Two. That is all it oh. takes as you cut through it and kill it. All right. Um, one last tire. thing. Killing that with the blood spear will yes. give me 2d6 temporary hit points. Nice. Yes, it will. Very nice. Ooh, baby. <laughs> and you rolled good. Wow. See, Byron, it was a good thing we went in there after all. There you go. No all right. kidding. <laughs> how do Holy I, moly. How do I note that on there? Just, um... Those, those are the hit points that you will go off. through first. Yeah, yeah so a... how do I just... I don't know where to note that, but I'll just use this center circle here. There you go. All right, okay. uh, anything else, Runar? Um, nope, that, that'll... that Well, I have my movement, actually. Let's see. Um, I have two advantages. Is that what you're saying, Kirk? As of right yep. now, ye yes. Okay. I will move up here next to Theo. Okay. Right here, like that. And All right. be menacing. All right. <laughs> nice. Byron. All right. Byron, seeing this worm having been slaughtered, is going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He's going to look at this beast. He's going to whip out his last advantage and stab it with the dagger. Nice. A 26 oh, yeah. 
for 19 damage. Oh, yeah. Right. Very nice. <laughs> Snarls at you as you puncture Actually, through its thick, thick hide. I got one after that. Um, bonus action. I will disengage. Or no, I don't even need to disengage. I'll just dash 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and I'll move to here. Okay. All and right. And that is my turn. Tenok. You see Dan Virius scrambling up the, the side of the canyon nearby. You see the creature below. What would you like to do? Oh, man. So many things. So many things. Um... Uh... I am going to, uh, I guess, use perhaps what is my most favorite spell, uh, which is catapult, and catapult a nearby rock into the creature mm. um, using a uh, fourth level spell slot to do so. Six die eight damage. Wow. Um, I will use uh, one of my advantages. Uh, I am actually. I might be thinking about this wrong. Oh no! Sorry, I will not use a dex an advantage because it is in fact a dexterity saving throw. Okay, dex save. Seventeen. Oh boy, that'll succeed. Uh, Was that half damage? Uh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oop, here's, here's the first five. And one more. So 32 uh, and half of that. Bludgeoning damage. That was less cool. That was less cool than I wanted it to be. If an object would strike a creature, that creature must make a dex save. On a failed save, the object strikes the target and stops moving. When the so object strikes something, the object is stressed. Did he make the save? He I mean, did. He made okay. the save. Yeah. It's not, I'm just going to say it's half damage because we don't want to dwell on it for too long. What yeah. was the total? 16? Uh, okay. Well, half of 32. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So got it. Noted. Anything else, Tanok? Pew pew. pew. Um, I will step to here. Okay. Yep, yep. Is that the end of your turn? Oh, sorry. Yes. At the end of your turn, the creature is going to use a legendary action to jump up onto the ledge in f right in front of you. Oh, that was a bad does, idea. Does that provoke tax of opportunity? It does not, actually. It is a pounce attack, or a pounce move. Um, but that does bring us to Theo. You watch as it jumps out of your reach and lands high above, actually looking down upon Tenok from the highest part of this ridge line. I don't like that. I'm a... I'm a... I'm going to make some decisions. That decision is to once more uh, pull power from his blade and cast again the armor of Agathus because those oh. temporary hit points are crucial. Well, um, and the damage that it does is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's... Yeah. I can get into some meta after the game, but the important part is right now, armor of Agathus, icy spike, icy spike, icy spike. As an action, I don't have any other bonus actions for funsies at this point, and I am going to move right here to give our good friend Byron advantage on Sluggy McSluggerson. All right. That brings us to Mosengi. Mosengi is going to reach down at you, uh, Tenok, with a tentacle strike to try to, nope. uh, to, try to get you. Nope. To get you good. No. 23 to hit. Nope. Um, 
What are these rolls? Yep. Do you, you have like plus 20? 10 bludgeoning yeah. damage and uh, five poison damage. You are grappled. And it is going to use its second attack to... Uh, it can't use that because it did not recharge its consuming bite, but it can use its mandible. Fuck it, noob. Uh, that's a 19 to hit with the mandibles. Nope. For an additional yeah, 15. Oh, Wait, do I really piercing. have the lowest AC right now? No, my AC no, is 16. No. My AC is also 16, so yeah. Oh. oh. Okay. That's not, not great. My AC is 16 because I have cast Mage Armor on myself. And because I have been an idiot. And Meanwhile, the mirror maggot image. is going to attack. Let's see, one of you. Somebody roll a d4 for me. Too late right now. I'm a dead man. I was the fastest. Nope, I was. <laughs> it's the same yeah, roll. you were. <laughs> it was the same roll. Oh, no, it wasn't. Uh, Byron, it's going to try to bite you, this, this maggot creature, which is a <laughs> large oh, creature. There. Uh, 19. That hits. Uh, 9 piercing damage. And I need a con save. Now I'll use my last advantage. I, this would be a good time to use it. 16. Very nice. You are not paralyzed. As a what? reaction, Theo, being very offended by this, oh, is going to God. use Sentinel... And punish it for not attacking him. Mm -hmm. Smash it. Smash it real good, my friend. That advantage. Nineteen to hit for twelve damage. Very nice. You cut through it and it splits into two pieces that are still wriggling about. Only one has the bitey parts on it, though. Well, that's what matters. <laughs> and uh, since it is technically still the big bad's turn, I am going to use a bonus action. And you guys, uh, Tenok, it drops you onto oh, the onto the stone below and disappears. I play dead. Does it disappear, disappear, or do I still see it? You can still see it. Okay. Dan Virius, uh, who was climbing up to escape the thing, sees this, sees it disappear as well, and he finally makes it up next to you and reaches down and pulls you up off your feet so you're, you're not prone. Where did it go? Koiki, right, where'd it go? It's right there. It's right there. He sees Point. what you're looking at, and he is going to take a shot with his bow, but he can't see it, so it's going to be a disadvantage. Uh... Disadvantage with his bow. A 16 is not... Nope, not going to hit. The arrow just flies wide. And he'll take a second shot. Uh, you watch as it actually hits and does uh, 11 damage to the nice. creature. <laughs> yeah. You just and he can just see the arrow kind of hovering in space because the arrow itself is not uh, <laughs> is not, not invisible. Uh, is invisible. And I need Runar to roll a d6 for me as we come to the top of the turn order. Okay, one. so this this cauldron here, Which uh, one? the one right here, number one. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. Sorry. I have the wrong wrong thing. There we go. Number one erupts, and I need. Is anybody even in? Uh, it looks like Theo is the only person that needs to make a deck save. Fourteen is the number to beat. Nice <laughs> success. Yeah. Yep. So you take half of seven, so you take three damage as you get you get misted 
just a light mist in of <laughs> it. strange acidy water. And at the top of the order, I think with what time it is, we're gonna go ahead and take a take our break here, come back to the battle next week. I hate to do oh, it, but God. early morning tomorrow for some of us. So I, um, I need to get some sleep myself. Yep. Oh. So let's we're gonna we're gonna end it there with the lava boiling. I even have I even have the water boiling audio. Can you hear that? Oh man. Oh yeah. 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 It's kind of like my oh, lava lamp back in college. This thing is, this thing is nasty. Yeah, it, it is. God dang. Gotta it's love no, boss monsters every it's time. Just, oh, gotta love it's boss. True. no that joke. True. It's been a long time coming, fellas. Yeah. It's long been a long time road coming. getting from there to here. It has. And now we're here. And we're not there anymore. It's been a long time. And our time is finally here. I will see my dreams come alive in my life. That, my friend, is true. I, I believe you. Touch the sky. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm not going to hold them back anymore. No, I'm not going to. I've got faith of the heart. Oh, he's which singing. maybe all hey. we have left I after this. Hey, Began, number one, thank you so much. That's very nice of you to say. We appreciate that. Um, we're having a good time here in Greyhawk. We've been at it for a while. And uh, this is sort of a, one of those random side quests that turned into a major part of the campaign. So that's just kind of how D&D works. It's funny. Um, but it's yeah. It's just random. <laughs> yeah. We've been making Dave make stuff up for at least a couple weeks now. Well, no. Oh, yeah. Probably months. a couple months Yeah. Now. We've been. Yeah. Can, we can never I, do what he thinks. Can I tell you a October. dark secret? That's what the party always does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how D&D works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the part I love. But you guys are great, and it's been fun. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens next week. It's looking a bit dire, I would say. Um, but you know, you oh, guys have some tricks right. up your sleeve. I mean, only Dan Varius is gonna die. It's not a well, big deal. I'll take his dagger. Dan Varius awesome. got upgrade. The, the thing is, the dire vultures dead. haven't even swooped in yet. You still got dire you said vultures. They were to regular run. vultures. <laughs> dire vultures. Yeah. I had a nature roll on that. Yeah. If, he nature if only rolled, you'd used your spyglass. You didn't use your, your birding oh, spyglass. Oh, no. <laughs> That's right. Runar. All He's joking wrong, aside, Runar. we are about to give away something really, really special. Guys, if you're watching, mm. guys and gals, as I look for my notes, from our sponsor. Our, yeah, our sponsor, CZRPG. They're a publishing company, a small indie company that publishes D&D &D content for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. And we're going to be giving away Encounters in Chult, which are a bunch of drungle... Jungle? Drungle? I'm a, I'm a bit drungled, <laughs> I think. Woo! Uh, a Jungle Adventures. Uh, and there are... It's 28-page PDF. We're going to send it to one lucky winner. All you have to do to win is type CZRPG into the uh, the chat here and Kai Whimsy will show you how it's done because I know Kai Whimsy loves to do that. Um, go ahead and enter to win and we're going to go ahead and draw this in just a couple of seconds here. We appreciate folks dropping in from Lord Gazumba's channel. It's always a huge thrill for us. We really appreciate that. Looking forward to jumping in on the virtual Greyhawk Con in October. Hell yeah. Uh, I will be running a show or a, a, a session. Um, the Siege of Westkeep, which I'm really excited about. And these guys have been helping me out with ideas and we're coming up with something pretty special. So uh, Spear yeah. Adventures Guild will be coming in strong with a fun, fun adventure. And I think registration for specific sessions begins on August 1st. So that's coming up really fast. So nice. make sure you register. It's only five bucks to register for Virtual Greyhawk Con. Um, Andy, I know you're talking about doing it with your brother. You should definitely do it. Um, I encourage folks to do uh, to, to get in on the fun. It's going to be really good. All right, enough chit chat for me. We waited long enough to get Scala Grimmer into the uh, the uh, giveaway, mm. so let's go ahead and do this. I need one of you beautiful people to do a five second countdown for me. Who wants to do it? I got, I got you, you. Oh, Tenok. Michael's got it. Michael, nice. let's do it. Been a while since Michael's let's, done one. let's make this happen. Here we go. Five, four, four, three, three <laughs> two, two. I don't know what to do. One, one. hit that. Here bell. we go. Robati 22. Mr. Robati 22. Robotti. To receive your gift. If you're here, let us know. Nice. Uh, and we will uh, send you the link to the PDF. We appreciate you all for being here. Uh, it's free. 
It is free. <laughs> also, I should I should say this that um, our sponsors have a um, a list uh, email list. God, I'm having a hard time thinking right now. I'm so excited from this crazy battle. But they have an email list that you can sign up for to get free stuff on a weekly basis. It's pretty rad. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that into the uh, into the the chat here as well. Um, did we get a verification that Robotti 22 is actually here? Because if Robotti 22 isn't here, we're going to give it to somebody else. Yep. Let's, let's give him a moment. Yeah. Is he still on the list? I do want to, I do uh, want to throw out, you know, anyone who was here before we got this wonderful raid from Lord Gasumba. I don't think check he's out, in the room anymore. Check out he's Lord not, Gasumba. Seriously. He's not listed on the users. I'm going to go he's ahead and roll it again. Soma 913 is Soma a 913 here. People might have already gone to bed. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, still on the user list. Michael's Soma 913, you have one. If you're here, let us know. Uh, Chad, hopefully you're checking to see who we're going to raid because we're definitely going to raid somebody. Oh, boy. Phoenix. Are we ever? Phoenix is, I mean, Phoenix is online, but he's still loading. Oh, Come on. Still? Man. Usually loads right up until the last second, and then yeah. right as we raid, he goes live. I think he's watching yeah. us, and he's like, "I can't get raided by those." Guys. Sometimes he have loves you, us, guys... but he doesn't want us as raiders. I think. I think we're too nefarious. You think so? No, no, you I'm spam kidding. him with too he... many emotes. No, not at all. He loves. No, us. he likes. <laughs> he loves the emotes. Yeah, he's. I love. I love Phoenix. Uh. Did we give away anything, or are we still waiting on Soma? I think we're still uh, waiting. Um, all right, I we're giving we're giving it to somebody else. Here we go. Because right. I, I got to go to bed. Scala, Scala Grimmer. Grimmer. Hey. Scala, please, you were just Please here. be here. Please be here. I, I want to give this thing away here. and go to bed. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. They could be AFK. I don't even know what that means. Hey, there is. Pat. Hey. Michael can go to bed finally. Um, I cast sleep on you, Michael. <laughs> it's highly. The effective. weird part is he's still on the he's still on Twitch, but he's not. Third he's time not is like, a charm. You're absolutely right. Yeah. He's not in our. Uh, he's not here in our our video. That's, That's so funny. weird. Uh, all right, you. what we're gonna do is we're gonna go raid Mana Pot Studio, everybody. Um, yep. We appreciate you all for stopping by. It's been fun. Come back next week to find out what happens. And uh, you never know what's going to happen with this crazy group. Uh, please join us in the raid. I'm going to pop this over to the, the end screen. But we really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow night for tomorrow. Midwinter Keening. Yes. Take it easy, everybody.